Good afternoon and welcome to the National Capital Planning Commission's May 5th, 2011 meeting. And if you'd all please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. We do have a, quor a quorum, and so we will uh, proceed without objection to the agenda as it has been adopted and, and presented. Um, first item on the agenda is report of the chairman, and I um, have one uh, substantial thing to discuss, and that is the National Capital Planning Commission plays a central role in the interagency security uh, with, with the interagency security committee, and we have an interagency security task force and. The task force, force met yesterday, May 3rd, or met on May 3rd, um, to discuss two, two things. One is the President's Park South Design Competition, that's the E Street just south of the White House where the Visitor Center is. And then second, a, uh, an initiative on security in public spaces at the uh, Historic Federal Triangle uh, nearby here from the Tr Federal Trade Commission down to the uh, Department of Commerce. Um, First thing first, the President's Park South, the design competition. Um, the, goal, the goals are really three, to generate creative and thoughtful design concepts. Second, to integrate durable and more aesthetic uh, U.S. Secret Service security elements in that area of the White House grounds. And then third, to improve the uh, experience of visitors as they are coming onto the White House. Uh, it's that area where the visitor's uh, um, entrance is. Happily, there were 23 um, very highly qualified, very good uh, submissions in the uh, design competition. Uh, we have a selection committee uh, that's chaired by NCPC's Bill Dowd, um, and they whittled it down to 15, which is very difficult, and even more difficult, they whittled it down and settled on five um, firms to advance to the next step, the next phase. And on Tuesday, the uh, task force endorsed the five firms that have been recommended to proceed forward. The five firms are these. Uh, Hood Design Studio of San Francisco. Uh, second is Michael Van Valkenburg Associates in New York, New York City. Third is Reed Hildebrand Landscape Architects of uh, Watertown, Massachusetts. Uh, fourth is Rogers Marvel architects out of New York City, and then fifth is Sasaki, also in Watertown, uh, Massachusetts. These firms uh, will develop, uh, will next to develop design concepts, and they'll be reviewed uh, both by the public and by our task force, and that will happen uh, at the end of June. The meeting, uh, our task force meeting then began, the uh, second part of our meeting was to discuss the Federal Triangle uh, Security and Public Space uh, Initiative. And that initiative is in two phases. Phase one is there is a building by building security inventory being conducted. And we have about uh, three more weeks of, uh, of work to do on that. Um, and that's being done per security criteria that has been uh, developed over the last year or about a year ago. And then second phase of the project is uh, will be led by the task force will be to develop the recommendations for shared uh, perimeter uh, security elements in the in an open space for the federal uh, triangle, um, and those recommendations will come forward by by year's end. And the next meeting of the task force will be at the end of June. And again, we'll be working on these two things. We will be looking at uh, the next stage of the President's Park South, uh, ranking the designs uh, that will be coming in from the five firms, and then we will continue work on the federal triangle piece. Um, so that's a pretty significant undertaking, and uh, appreciate very much Bill Dowd for his um, his work on this. That ends the chairman's report, and I'll turn it over to Marcel Acosta, executive director, for the agenda item number two, which is his report. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, there are two items, uh, uh, two upcoming public events that might have, uh, might be of interest to the general public uh, on Thursday, May nineteenth. Uh, the commission and the DC Office of Planning is holding a joint public meeting 
on the NCPC Southwest Eco District Initiative, as well as the uh, Office of Planning's Maryland Avenue Southwest Small Area Plan. At the follow-up meeting, uh, we'll cover findings from the recently completed market study, uh, seek public input on preliminary revitalization opportunities along 10th Street and Maryland Avenue Southwest, and also view ideas on how the combined Southwest study area can become a more sustainable and livable uh, neighborhood. And this will be held at the uh, DC Office of Planning uh, offices at, uh, down on the southwest side. Uh, second, we are holding a, uh, on, on June 7th, uh, NCPC, and the D uh, DC chapter of the American Institute of Architects will co-host Contemporary Design Historic City, the balancing act between preservation and innovation. This public panel discussion will explore how Washington uh, can preserve its architectural heritage and welcome new innovative design into its urban fabric. The event will take place at Catholic University School of Architecture and Planning. And uh, details on this event will be on our website. Uh, I'd also like to take this opportunity to introduce a new staff member, uh, Jennifer Hirsch. Um, Jennifer is serving as our new uh, preservation officer. Uh, she joined our staff in mid-April and uh, was most recently, most recently with FEMA's Office of Environmental Planning and Historic Preservation, where she worked on NEPA compliance and Section 106 review for public uh, projects funded by the Grant Program Directorate. Prior to her work with FEMA, Jennifer was a preservation planner with the City of San Diego and the staff to the City's Historic Resources Board. Uh, Jennifer has a BA from Brown University and a Master's of City Planning and a Master of Science in Historic Preservation from the University of Pennsylvania. Uh, so welcome, Jennifer. Also, and finally, uh, this, um, today's commission meeting is actually being uh, streamed live on the website, uh, on the NCPC website. Uh, and with that, this marks our um, uh, the inauguration of our uh, out, uh, of our outreach uh, to the general public, so they could view uh, the commission meetings uh, as they, as they take place uh, on our website. Uh, with that, I'd like to introduce uh, Christian Madera uh, from our Office of Public Affairs, uh, who will also discuss our recent outreach activities as well as uh, what we're doing with our website in terms of uh, this new uh, live streaming initiative. I'd also note that uh, Christian was named as the Planetizens. Uh, one of the uh, uh, top 25 leading thinkers in urban planning and technology uh, recently. So um, welcome, Christian. Thank you, Marcel. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. I'm just going to take a quick moment to give you an update on NCPC's current outreach activities, uh, talk a little bit about where we're headed, and also touch on what we're doing to ensure that when it comes to public outreach, the agency is getting a good return on its investment. Uh, to start, I think I have some slides. Oh, there they are. Uh, to start, I think it's helpful to talk about why we do outreach. Um, for us, there's three main goals. One, we want to educate the public about the agency and its function. Uh, second, we want to engage the public in our work and solicit input into the planning and review processes. And third, we want to help the agency get recognized as an authority in the community on pertinent planning and development issues. In addition, there are several external factors like the Obama administration's Open Government Initiative and the recently plat passed Plain Writing Act, which are pushing federal agencies to share more information with the public in, uh, in ways that are easy to consume and understand. Uh, so what does NCPC do when it comes to outreach? Uh, we do a number of things. I think many of you will already, already be familiar with these. Uh, we hold regular public events, including our commission meetings, uh, public meetings and workshops related to planning initiatives and our speaker series. Uh, beyond events, our website and email communications have been the primary way that the agency now uh, sends out information to the public. Over the past couple years, we've been augmenting our website uh, with uh, videos and social media tools like Facebook and YouTube. And of course, we can't forget printed publications like our annual report and traditional uh, media tools such as press releases. To give you a quick summary of the results of all this, uh, we've had over 1,250 people attend our events uh, in 2010. Our email list has grown to 1,600 subscribers, uh, up from about 700 at the start of 2010. We average about two to three uh, mentions in the news media each week, and we've produced over 50 videos that have been viewed online collectively over 2,000 times. Moving forward, there's a number of things we want to do to further engage the public. As Marcel mentioned, uh, we are now, starting today, providing a live video feed of commission meetings over the web. And we'll be doing this with our other public events where possible. Uh, we hope this expands the audience for our meetings and events and lets people who might otherwise not be able to attend in person uh, know what's going on firsthand. 
Furthermore, the uh, commission meeting uh, will be archived online and we'll soon be including links from the commission action text on our website to the relevant sections of an archive video uh, that allows the public to see the commission's deliberation around each action. Uh, also related to enhancing the public awareness of commission meetings is our effort to publish submission materials online for projects under review prior to commission meeting dates. Uh, NCPC has also started using Twitter. This is a rapidly growing social media platform that makes use of short messages of only 140 characters. Uh, Twitter is being utilized by many government agencies such as EPA, DOT Secretary Ray LaHood, and, and of course President Obama himself. Uh, NCPC's official Twitter presence is going to help the agency communicate to a, a more savvy growing audience and provides a valuable complement to some of our other new outreach strategies. For example, citizens interested in a particular action on the Commission's agenda can monitor the agency's Twitter feed in real time and then jump over to our live video feed to watch the pertinent discussion. Uh, in the future, we're hoping to explore how other social media tools might fit into our outreach efforts. Deployed appropriately, we think that these can further help increase public awareness and participation. Of course, it doesn't make sense to do any of these things uh, if they don't really provide measurable results for the agency. So as we continue trying these new methods of communication, we're also working to develop a comprehensive strategy to evaluate our success when it comes to outreach. This involves collecting better data about the uh, actual reach of our various communication channels, uh, analyzing outcomes, for example, if people actually decide to participate in an event or comment on a proposal based on our messaging, and then also look at cost effectiveness. Uh, we hope by the end of the year, we'll have a lot better idea about what's working well, what doesn't work, and what we might want to try differently. With that, uh, I'd like to thank the Commission for its time, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Members of the staff? Uh, members of the commission questions thank you very much we do have a terrific staff who is a uh, public affairs staff uh, we're very blessed i guess i'll have to get a twitter account now <laughs> mr provincia do you tweet <laughs> i just have one recommendation that they uh, take the uh, chairman's uh, better side yes. in in uh, future touche um Thank you very much. Um, next item on the agenda is the uh, consent calendar. There are five items on the consent calendar. I'm sorry, I've jumped ahead, excuse me. Next item is agenda item three, which is a legislative update. Ms. Schuyler. Um, I thought I was gonna get out from under. Um, I actually have nothing to report. Indeed, thank you. Uh, now agenda item number four is the consent calendar. We have five items. Um, on the consent calendar, uh, we're going to do two separate votes uh, on the consent calendar as Mr. May has recused himself from uh, participating, participating in items 4A and 4B because they will come before the zoning commission on which he serves. And so let's do those two votes first, 4A and 4B uh, together. 4A is the draft uh, Van Ness campus plan for the University District of Columbia. And item 4B is the student center for the University of the District of Columbia. Um, are there any questions or comments from commission members on 4A and 4B? Hearing none, is there a motion uh, to approve 4A and 4B? It's been moved and seconded that 4A and 4B uh, be approved. Uh, uh, all in favor say aye. aye. And opposed no. Those items are approved. The other three items on the consent calendar are 4C, which is the District of Columbia Water and Sewer Authority Clean Rivers Project, uh, Anacostia Park. 4D is the new Dunbar Senior High School, and 4E is the first stage in consolidated planned and consolidated plan unit development and related amendment to the zoning map for the air rights above the center leg freeway. Uh, questions or comments on those three items? Mr. May. Um, I just want to comment that on the Queen Rivers project, um, this isn't a uh, Park Service project, but the, the work that's, that's um, happening here uh, will happen, or at least the, the surface appearance of, of this work will happen on the parkland. And uh, it is a, uh, such a, a big and important project, and I think this is a, a, an important moment that it's moving forward um, with the, the construction of this um, uh, replacement of the uh, combined sewer outfall 
uh, and this is actually an access point for the the uh, the Anacostia tunnel, um, mm -hmm. and it, it's it's going to be a very very big project, and this is going to be a construction site for actually a long long time, uh, I think more than 10 years. So. Wow. Other questions or comments? Hearing none, is there a motion to on 4C, 4D, and 4E? It's been moved and it's been seconded. All in favor of uh, 4C, 4D, and 4E say aye. aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. In moving on to the action items uh, individually, uh, agenda item number 5A is the draft master plan for the Nebraska Avenue complex known as the NAC. And we have Ms. Kelly. Good afternoon. Before you today is the draft master plan for the Nebraska Avenue complex submitted by the General Services Administration for your comment. The Nebraska Avenue complex, um, which I will refer to as the NAC, is located in northwest Washington, D.C., and currently houses components of the Department of Homeland Security. Many of these components will be relocating to St. Elizabeth's once that is ready for them. However, DHS has done a study that looks at their locations throughout the National Capital Region and with a goal to consolidate 40 of the locations down to uh, seven to 10 locations. And the NAC is an important component of that consolidation due to its size, as well as its ability to reach a level five security criteria. The NAC is, excuse me. The NAC is located at Nebraska Avenue and Massachusetts Avenue at Ward Circle. Across from the NAC is American University, and actually AU owns three sides around Ward Circle. So you have the Katz and Art Center, as well as the bulk of the AU campus, and then a surface parking lot directly across from the NAC. The AU is currently undergoing a master, or excuse me, a campus plan update, um, which will look at development at AU, also um, development in the parking lot that is across from the NAC. Next to AU, uh, south of the NAC, is a residential area, as well as there is a high-rise high residential um, directly south of the NAC. To the east is Glover Archibald Park, which is a National Park Service park. And then you have an NBC Studios, um, as well as a church institution. And across the way is the Swedish Ambassador's residence. 0.75 miles north of the NAC is Tenley Town and the Tenley Town Metro Station. And you can see here the distance from the metro, the first ring is a half a mile, and the second ring is a mile distance. Here is the existing conditions of the site. It's about 30 buildings that equivocate to approximately 653,000 square feet of office space and houses 2,400 employees. You can see the bulk of the campus is um, towards Nebraska Avenue with a few scattering of buildings in the back of the campus. There are two large surface parking lots that accommodate most of the parking for the NAC. Um, however, there is uh, parking within the secure perimeter off of access roads in the NAC. The NAC site has a rich history um, and GSA is currently undergoing a nomination to make this a historic district on the National Register. And GSA has determined that there's two areas of significance at the NAC. The first being when the site was the Mount Vernon Seminary for Girls, which was the first non-secretarian um, school for girls in the district. I um, mean, you can see here the proposed um, potential contributing buildings during this period of significant at the NAC, and it includes building one, which is the main building, as well as the Gatsley House and a, a few other buildings. The second period of significance was when the Navy moved to the site during World War II and moved their communications annex there. Um, and this is where they worked to uh, break the code of the Japanese during World War II. And you can see um, the potential contributing buildings during that significant period. You can just see how um, in these areas, how the site has changed through the years um, from when it was the school to what it is today. 
Um, and the historic context or integrity of the site has severely diminished through the years due to uh, infrastructure improvements and operations at the NAC. And one of the major intents of the master plan is to restore this historic in character to the campus. So you can see here the proposed renovation of historic buildings. And GSA has also determined approximately 16 buildings that will be demolished um, as part of this master plan. And with that dem demolish of buildings, that allows opportunity for the location of development in the future. And you can see here in the proposed master plan, um, the developable areas. The master plan proposes six new buildings, two in the front of the campus that respect the setback established by the historic uh, buildings on campus. The bulk of the buildings will be located in the back of the house with four new buildings as well as a new um, parking structure which will consolidate the parking on site into a four level parking structure two above grade and two below grade they will also have a green roof here you can see the comparison between the existing conditions and the proposed master plan conditions the master plan proposes to build 1.2 million square feet of office space at the NEC, um, but you can see that almost half of that is the retention of the historic buildings, approximately 500,000 square feet. And it's interesting to note that while the development on the NAC is increasing, um, that the amount of impervious surface on the NAC is actually decreasing, and this is due to the consolidation of parking and the use of impervious pavers and such. The number of uh, people at the NAC is increasing approximately 1,800. Um, however, the amount of parking on the site will actually decrease. And this is due to the fact that currently the NAC does not meet the one to four parking ratio um, for employees at the NAC. Um, just to note that this 1150 uh, number was submitted in the draft master plan, but GSA is currently evaluating evaluating the number of parking spaces needed for visitors at the site. So this number may change. However, the amount of parking for employees will remain um, consistent with the one to four parking ratio. Staff has evaluated the draft master plan and as well as has been involved in the master plan process and the Im environmental impact statement process. And ultimately, uh, the executive director is recommending favorably on this master plan. It is the, the alternative carried forth here is the best alternative that was evaluated in the EIS. And I will just go through a, a few of the positive elements of the master plan. Firstly, the ma master plan proposes to develop um, the ward circle with a signature building. And you can see here the existing views from Massachusetts into um, the area where the building would be located. And you can also see um, some of the other buildings that AU has along ward circle. Now the master plan and GSA acknowledge uh, that this needs to be quote, a signature building due to its location um, at ward circle and that the architecture for the building will have um, a high quality. Second, the, the master plan proposes to consolidate, as I said, into one parking structure. Um, this decreases the amount of impervious surface on the site, as well as removes parking from the internal circulation of the campus, giving it more of a pedestrian feel. The draft master plan also lays out multiple sustainable goals to meet federal laws as well as uh, executive orders, as well as GSA's uh, policy that new buildings will meet at a minimum of LEED Gold certification. <coughs> you can see here the proposed uh, general stormwater uh, concept for the draft master plan. Currently, there is little stormwater management at the site, and the site slopes down to the park, so a lot of the stormwater flows into the park. Um, but the new um, development will comply with DC regulations as well as ESA 438. And you can see that, that they have um, multiple green roofs as well as pervious pavement and the use of underground and retention storage facilities. As well as, uh, as I noted before, it will restore many of the historic buildings on the campus. 
as well as the new buildings in the back of the house will respect the height limit set by the building one, the main building on the campus. Um, so therefore the new buildings will not overshadow the historic buildings and views from Nebraska Avenue of the new buildings will be limited. Staff notes that this is a draft master plan and GSA is uh, continuing to evolve to the final um, master plan. And as such, the executive director has some recommendations as GSA moves forward. And um, in lieu of reading the recommendations at the end of the presentation, I will be walking um, you through them as in the next couple slides. Here you can see the proposed access points for the NAC. Uh, you, the main access points will be off of Nebraska Avenue. This will have pedestrian, uh, bicycle, vehicular, truck, and bus access. Um, and then there's also an access off of Nebraska Avenue where this is bicycle and secure and um, pedestrian access as well as the bus um, access. The executive director is recommending that GSA evaluate the pedestrian bicycle access to the site, specifically um, north on Nebraska Avenue. As the, this, from this edge of the property down to the proposed access point is over 600 feet um, long, there may be an opportunity to have an access point more north closer to the metro station. As well as the executive director is recommending that GSA continue to work with DDOT on the proposed access points for all of the NAC um, to evaluate the best options moving forward. Um, perhaps having the ability for visitors and vehicular access off of Nebraska Avenue to <coughs> relieve pressure off of Massachusetts Avenue. Here you can see the proposed security for the NAC. It will meet a level five criteria, meaning that it will have a 100 foot setback from the fence line to a building edge, as well as there will be a, a double fence line um, around the NAC. And the executive director is recommending that GSA evaluate the need for a level five security uh, requirement here, specifically the the need for a double fence along Nebraska Avenue and Ward Circle due to its negative views um, from the public realm. Also, the lowering of the security level might allow for additional access points off of Nebraska Avenue. Here you can just see some general landscape elements that are proposed in the master plan. The master plan sets out general guidelines uh, for the landscaping throughout the campus. Um, however, the executive director is recommending uh, that JSA specifically set um, guidelines for the areas viewed from public space, specifically uh, Ward Circle and Nebraska Avenue, as these are uh, highly visible areas. Um, as well as you can note here, the Gatsley House, um, which is still owned by the Department of the Navy and is used as flag officer quarters. Um, the executive director is recommending that GSA work with the Department of Navy so that the landscape plan for this area and the security plan for this area are um, work are seem as one entity as it was um, historically as well as staff supports the district's goal to increase the tree canopy uh, throughout the whole district. And we just encourage GSA to evaluate if there's an opportunity to increase the tree canopy even more at the NAC. Here you can see the proposed modal splits that was uh, developed in the draft transportation management plan. Um, prior to this, the NAC has never had a transportation management plan. Um, and you can see here the changes from a, the amount of parking on now to a one to four parking ratio. Um, however, I would like to note that this uh, modal split was done using DHS wide survey data and DHS has agreed to do a NAC uh, specific survey to um, ensure that this modal split is correct and they're currently undergoing this now. Sorry for the technical difficulty. Um, a robust TMP will be needed for the site and 
The executive director is recommending that DHS and GSA continue to work with DDOT and DCOP on the proposed modal splits and the strategies in the TMP. Also, uh, the uh, DCOP has noted that with an increase of 1,800 people at the NAC, there will be little economic uh, benefit to the surrounding area. And we encourage GSA to work with DCOP on potential economic um, benefit or development programs here at the NAC. Lastly, you here you can see the proposed phasing under the master plan, as well as they will be renovating the historic buildings. And the executive director is recommending that GSA um, include a phasing plan as part of the master plan. The phasing plan should also evaluate to, ins uh, to ensure that the parking ratio will be met at each development phase and should be correlated with the transportation management plan. Um, with that, it's the executive director's recommendation that the commission comment favorably on the master plan and recommends that in the continued development, GSA um, evaluate the information that I had presented to you in the previous slides. Mr. Chairman, that concludes my presentation. We have representatives from DHS and GSA here if you have questions for them. Thank you, Ms. Kelly. Before we uh, take the matter to us, we have two um, members of the public who wish to comment, and I think it'd be uh, good to get uh, uh, their comments first before, so that we have benefit of them during our discussion. First, we have Ms. Ann Hewer of the Advisory Neighborhood Commission 3D, and second, Mr. David Furman of the Westover, Westover Homes Corporation. Uh, each of these, uh, both of these are representing an organization, so you will have five minutes and there's a clock on the wall that will uh, show you kind of countdown. Um, and we welcome you. Thank you. Welcome, Ms. Hewer. Good afternoon. I thank you for this opportunity to make comments about the draft master plan. ANC3D at its regularly scheduled meeting on February 2nd reviewed the draft EIS and approved by a vote of 9-0 a resolution outlining a series of objections to future plans for the 37-acre site. We represent neighborhoods directly impacted by the proposal, although NAC site itself does not fall within our boundaries. We represent neighborhoods complete directly across the street and along the commuter routes to the NAC site. In fact, most commuters accessing the site will have to first drive through ANC 3D to reach NAC. The level of growth anticipated by GSA in all three options outlined, including alternative B, is so intense that it will add to traffic congestion, especially given the lack of any new and or effective traffic mitigation strategies, compromise pedestrian safety, and alter and destabilize residential neighborhoods surrounding NAC. We support no action or as little as possible. In fact, we urge GSA to consider other locations. As you're putting 750,000 new growth square feet, six new buildings and 4,200 seats, uh, nearly doubling the number of federal employees and contractors using the site. Uh, we feel that this is most inappropriate in a residential neighborhood. In its resolution, ANC 3D noted that the traffic study completed by GSA as part of the draft EIS was inadequate and perhaps flawed. ANC 3D noted that the traffic study included no data collections for streets in our neighborhoods, such as Foxhall Road, Loughborough, Arizona Avenue. And these are the main commuter route routes to NAC from suburban Virginia where more than half of DHS employees live. We noted that the contradiction in the study conclusion that the proposed expansion would have no impact on traffic or pedestrian safety, while also acknowledging that even no action would lead to failed or deteriorated levels of service. We would like to note that a traffic study of the Ward Circle area completed recently by AU raises additional questions of whether the GSA traffic study is flawed. We, uh, ANC3D, retained the services of Nelson Nygaard, 
which is a highly respected transportation for planning firm to assist in our review. And based on their review, we are advised that both GSA and AE studies relied on the same data for streets near NAC, but reached fundamentally different conclusions. And given that AU has proposed a significant expansion over the next 10 years in the same corridor, we consider it uh, critical that no action be taken on this master plan until the DC Zoning Commission has considered and resolved the issues around the AU expansion later this year. We would also like to oppose, well, we strongly object to plans for expanded use of the Ma Massachusetts Avenue entrance to access the site, which already is experiencing a failed level of service. The failure to propose meaningful traffic mitigation is particularly sig significant since DDOT is on record in a letter to GSA that there are no programmed transportation improvements for the area. And lastly, we are concerned that GSA may not be planning for adequate parking at the site. Our concern is for parking spillover in the neighborhood, a current problem experienced by DHS's residential neighbors. We believe that any expansion should include a plan that addresses DHS employee or contractor parking on residential streets. The full resolution approved by the ANC is attached to this testimony. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hewer, very much. And you will be followed by uh, David Fearman of the Westover Homes, the Westover Place Homeowners Association. Mr. Fearman, welcome. Good afternoon. Excuse me. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is David Fairman. I am the director and treasurer of the Westover Place Homeowners Corporation, and um, our 149-unit townhome community is located almost directly across the street, that is Massachusetts Avenue, uh, from the entrance drive uh, into the current facility. Daily, the uh, owners of these townhomes endure the strain placed on our neighborhood uh, parking and transportation infrastructures due to uh, the increasing operations of the Department of Homeland Security. The de development of this plan will infringe on the neighborhoods in an even larger way, and uh, we do not believe that the plan adequately uh, creates mitigating uh, circumstances in which the, that, that it can be addressed. The Westover homeowners are already negatively impacted. Since the terrorist activities of 9-11, uh, employment has grown dramatically at the site, it has outpaced the available parking and has forced private contractor parking off-site and into the neighborhoods. At Westover Place, my community, uh, we have added guard service to turn away these government contractors and employees from parking on our private property to protect it. That currently cost is $300 a year per homeowner, and it's fearful that if this plan is enacted, which greatly increases employment and reduces parking at the same time, that we'll be forced to go to 24-hour guard service to protect our private property at a cost of $1,500 a year per homeowner. The current operation already places strains on the neighborhood streets, as the ANC has testified, and we fully endorse uh, the resolution of the ANC. The recent, recently proposed master plan for the site indicates that over half of the employees come from Northern Virginia. It is anticipated that this trend will continue even as they expand. The existing public transportation is incapable of handling this proposed growth, and the master plan does not adequately address the transportation arteries uh, that come from Northern Virginia, namely Fox Hall, Nebraska, MacArthur, Reservoir, Canal, Arizona, and Loughborough roads. All of these roads are currently saturated during peak travel times and will only get worse. None of this has been addressed in the plan. The Westover Place homeowners does not trust that the federal government be able to effectively mitigate the traffic and parking problems through the voluntary means as they increase employment and reduce the number of on-site parking spaces. It would seem logical to consider alternate locations, perhaps closer to the employee base, uh, that would not impose upon this residentially zoned neighborhood. 
Despite the General Service Administration and the Department of Homeland Security's desire to grow at the Nebraska Avenue complex site, there are other options. First, a decision could be made to maintain the status quo and hold employment levels at current level. This no action alternative would not affect the neighborhoods any worse than the current levels. Second, alternatives A, B, and C could be implemented with modifications to the access points, increasing the parking strategy and staggering work shifts to spread out the traffic burden. Third, there could be an investment in federal dollars into the area DC road improvement projects, including Ward Circle, to reduce the impact um, that the greatly increased employment projection will produce. I might also mention that there is a lack of commercial parking in this area. There are no commercial parking garages to absorb the overflow immediately adjacent to this site. Fourth, the Department of Homeland Security's most desired plan, Alternate B, would, could, and should include backup alternatives um, should the suggested transportation mitigations not have the desired effects. It's entirely possible that GSA's projections are wrong and that parking needs will actually increase. The DHS preferred plan is to increase the seats from 2,390 to 4,100, a 76% increase in seats and reduce parking spaces at the same time by 7%. I just cannot believe that carpooling and shuttle buses from Virginia are going to solve that problem and I expect that the overflow parking is going to come into our neighborhoods. Finally, it could be determined that the Nebraska Avenue complex site because, it's, because of its location in a residentially zoned and fully established neighborhood is not appropriate and an alternate site for some or all of this massive growth could be found elsewhere. You, Thank you, you. You can finish your remarks. All right, thanks you, very much. I have just one close. more uh, paragraph. Yes, sir. My intention today is to alert you to the existing conditions that already affect the neighborhood surrounding the Nebraska Avenue complex and that there is a fear that this impact will only get worse and also to make sure that you understand that there are other options available to GSA and DHS that could decrease the neighborhood impact. I assure you that there are plenty of other options to consider beyond the five suggestions which I put forth today, and I urge you to take these into consideration. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Mr. Fearman, very much. Uh, this ends the public comment period, and we'll return the discussion to uh, the Commission do we have questions for Ms. Kelly I, ha I had one um, the transportation master plan goals should be achieved over what period of time well it will be t dependent on the the phasing plan as to when they okay. will achieve those. I'm with you thank you questions comments Ms. Uh, yeah, Mr. Uh, Ms. Kelly, uh, the EDR calls for continued coordination on the modal split. Could you elaborate on that a little bit? Yes. Um, as I showed in the presentation, the modal split that was analyzed in the chart, I, I can put it back up. It's page 23 of your EDR. Yeah. These were developed using... Um, data that was collected um, DHS-wide. Um, it's not site-specific. Um, so they, they are currently doing a survey, and they, they're working with DDOT on the survey questions and the results of the surveys to determine what this um, existing modal split is and then how to um, address the current, the goal of the modal split. Um, D, uh, DDOT and DCOP um, thought that some of the modal splits um, did not correctly represent what is out there today or what should be out there in the future and uh, they're just, they're working on getting the information so that they can change these modal splits. Yeah, for Metro Rail, existing percentage I see is 30 percent and the goal is 38 percent. How do you get from one to the other? Well, they, they would have to offer um, programs such as shuttle bus and, and incentives. Incentives. Okay. okay. And we're working with them on that. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Uh, Ms. Stongasser and then Mr. Hart. Ms. Kelly, what, what is the next step if we, if we vote to <laughs> approve this draft master plan? Somewhere in here I noticed it said that the plan is 35% done. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, I, I completely sympathize with Ms. Hauer and, and Mr. Furman about the impacts of this site's development and the, in combination with the impacts of what's happening on AU. My concern is if we move forward with, with you know, efforts to coordinate and evaluate potentials and we don't really have the full modal split and we don't really have a phasing plan, that the transportation is going to drive the development as opposed to the development responding. And if we approve this, what is the next stage? What will happen next with DHS? Well, they're, they're going to have to, they're currently evaluating the comments for the mm -hmm. draft EIS, um, and they're going to take the commission's comments into consideration as they're doing that as well. So there may be changes to the EIS as they move forward, but they'll also continue to work with DDOT. Um, they have set up a community group that will look at transportation impacts in the, mm -hmm. in the community, and that was set up through um, Commissioner, Norton's office, I'm sorry, and um, they will continue to look at that. Those, they're just still evaluating all the concerns. So, so the next thing that will come back to us will be the proposed master plan? Correct. I, I just got to say to the other commission, I'm really uncomfortable moving forward on a draft plan with so much uncertainty, and especially with, this tra with the transportation management plan being incomplete and the phasing plan being unprovided. I'm sorry, Mr. Hart. Yeah, I, I just wanted to, to confirm that what we're seeing here is not representative of the site under consideration. This is a survey of DHS employees within the metropolitan area. So the drive alone SOV per, existing percentage is going to be closer to 50% based on current parking provided against the employees. It could be. Has there been an existing split done? for this site. This site has never had a TMP. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Provincia. Mr. Mayor. A couple of uh, questions. Uh, appreciate the uh, thorough analysis by the staff and, uh, and Ms. Kelly. Is there any affiliation between the, the folks that are already at the NAC and American University? Was that at all a factor in determining that DHS not only, need, not only needed to stay at that location, but also grow immediately adjacent to, to AU? Is there any academic research affiliation of any kind with the university? Uh, the current um, components at the NAC will be relocating to DHS. I don't believe there is a no, correlation between of. the two groups. Okay. What about, uh, has there been consideration of the view shed particularly? What's the, what's the name, I may have missed it, the name of the high-rise complex that's on uh, Massachusetts? I don't know the name of that. It appears that just the, uh, at least the conceptual placement of the new facilities at the NAC would put the parking structure immediately adjacent to that high rise as opposed to, say, a, a more attractive building to look at every day out your yeah. well, back it, window. Would that also partially obscure the, the view of Glover Archibald Park from the, from the high rise? It, it's going to be four levels, two underground, so two above ground, but they, mm -hmm. they did supply a green roof on Green roof, top. yeah, that's good, uh, good mitigation. Mm -hmm. And the driver for the uh, uh, security level five, is that the current security level of the 2,400 folks that are already at the, at the NAC? That is So the it's not a, not a higher level than currently exists? Th correct. Okay. And is that driven, uh, I would assume, by a combination of perhaps the, the security levels, the missions that are currently there, which are probably are very sensitive, as well as the, um, the visual and the perhaps electronic surveillance capabilities that are uh, provided by a combination of the embassy, the NBC station, and the high-rise apartments, is that th those things kind of combine the existing requir security requirements as well as the opportunities for electronic and visual surveillance. Um, pedestrian access, it appeared that the closest possible pedestrian access to the Tenley Metro was on Massachusetts. Is that the, uh, there was something like a, a three-quarter of a mile um, uh, travel distance? I think it was on slide 14. Is it, is it three-quarter, 0.75 miles t from here to the Metro? Is it from, no. from, from which point in the site? Um, it would be north on Nebraska Avenue, and there is an access point um, here on okay. Nebraska Avenue. What, what about uh, shuttle service, either along Nebraska or along uh, Massachusetts? Does DHS currently have something in place, or would they put something in place to mitigate the 
They they currently have a, an extensive shuttle bus service. Okay. I've been to that site recently and had a, f a, a function at uh, Katzen, so I'm f a little bit familiar with the with the area. Okay, uh, shuttle services. We talked about that. Oh, the the net increase around 2,400 folks now going to 42. The increase is 17, 1,800 folks. Less than half of those folks would drive. So I'm just trying to figure out what the net in increase would be. Is that is that a, a fair assessment that we're only adding maybe 700 or so? It should actually be less than Single? what is driving there today because of the parking mm -hmm. ratio of one to four. Right. So only a fourth of the employees that will be proposed there can drive there okay. um, in the future. So it'll be less traffic and less parking in the future as there is uh, currently. Okay, yeah. that, that seems to... Could I clarify the right, point of right clarification? Direction. We don't actually know how many people drive to this campus now. That's correct. This the survey is regional, not site specific. No, they have the number of parking spaces that are allowed at the NAC and they know the utilization. Well they know the people that are parking on the NAC, but they don't know how many employees are driving to the site. I mean that they're anybody who's been up there in the daytime knows that the on street parking is is a is as big a mess as the on site parking. And so I think, I guess that gets to my issue of concern over having having a more solid understanding of what's really going to happen through the TMP, through the phasing, through the survey, and when that's going to come. <coughs> and to be 35% done with a master plan and not have an understanding of how many people are really coming and what the transportation <coughs> management plan is going to be just seems uh, cart before the horse. And, and I find it very, very discomforting. I, I don't think I'm going to be able to vote for the current EDR. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mr. Chair, I just wanted to know about, obviously, we, probably all of us are concerned about the parking. Um, to the uh, speakers from the community, I wonder whether or not, and to the staff direct, uh, whether or not residential parking and this a good neighbor's policy that American University employs now, which got, I've been advised, media attention recently. <laughs> Is that type of thing going to be, has that been, I mean, what kind of efforts are we making or have been made to try to do something to mitigate uh, other than doing more homework and being prepared to go forward? Whether we, I'm not sure we're there yet, but anything been done to try to mitigate yeah. through residential parking, good mm -hmm. neighbors, that type of thing? DHS has uh, heard the community's concern, at, and they're not only going to do a, a TMP just for the master plan, but current entities that are on the NAC now. So there will be a master uh, TMP in place for what is going on at the NAC currently. Well, I would move a little bit fast. I think that's the question that's been asked. Uh, can we, what is, what would be the impact of the timetable if we were to get more information about parking before we go forward on the government, on, on the homeland security, et cetera, et cetera? Are you asking, does the team or the master plan need to be approved today? Is that what you're no, I'm saying if we were to do something, uh, what would be the impact to slow it down if we didn't move it today? What would, what would slowing it down mean to the government, to the I process? Think, <laughs> if that would be up for GSA. Yeah, I was going to call on uh, someone from yeah, DHS or NAC you, at, at some point. Up here. My uh, name is uh, Scott Battles with General Services Administration, and uh, we do have some <laughs> staff members here that can address some of these questions that you're asking in probably a little bit more detail. Uh, I want to introduce uh, Jim Clark, which is who have MTA Architects, and he's our consultant that's providing most of the evaluation for the master plan development. Uh, we could certainly approach and, and ask uh, or answer some of the questions that you have right now, uh, reference to the TMP, what's happening right now in transportation. Jim can probably answer some more, more particular questions, and we do have other staff members here that can address some of the other questions that you may have. Um, I think it's so also um, important to remember, though, this is a draft master plan. Exactly. So the next step will be a proposed master plan. Um, it, 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 it hardly... Uh, gets us set in stone. Yeah. Um, in fact, we were we were advised to come <laughs> in at this point um, for sort of a checkup from the neck up. But it is a draft. <laughs> it's been long in the making, and um, I don't know. Can you speak to the schedule, Scott, in terms of um, delay? If there were a deferred decision. Well, right, right now with the master plan, we would be projecting out the master plan to be complete sometime November of 2012. That's considering that we just proceed on now as projected. 
uh, completing the EIS process and completing the master planning process and going through all the additional things that Cheryl had talked about, <clears throat> the additional traffic surveys, the studies, you know, kind of improving and, and uh, addressing the, the uh, TMP issues, but taking us all the way to probably the November of 2012. Uh, that would be the master plan sequence of events. And after that, of course, it just depends on a lot of variables of funding and how we yeah. actually execute any master plan that would yeah. come out of that. Yeah. Well, Mr. Chair, I guess my, and I'm not, but uh, I think that's, I appreciate the answer. Uh, and since you're here to head with neck, what you said, what was that you used, the term you used? Head to, head to toe, neck to. Check up from the neck up. Check up from the neck up. Well, I guess we, you're going to probably maybe that's hear some negative votes here, maybe not enough to stop it, but. I think we're giving you some signals that we're concerned about parking, as we all are in the neighborhood. So uh, I don't know where it will go from here, but to check well, we, up from the neck up, maybe what we're saying. Check we it up from the neck up. We had heard from the public and and, uh, and different venues, and that has de definitely been something that we've been focusing mm -hmm. on, trying to improve and, and make the TMP more robust, uh, which is something that uh, we've heard the community as far as what's happening right now, whether we do nothing. Uh, there's a there may be an issue with parking uh, in the neighborhood. So that is something we're addressing right now. As Cheryl mentioned that uh, with Representative uh, Norton's office, that's something that's happening parallel with the master plan. So we're also doing the uh, master plan development and the TMP for the future uh, condition. In other words, the residential parking and the good, good neighbor, good policy, all those will be factors that may be useful and, and considered in the process. Yes. All right, fine. I think this is very interesting because we're going to be facing uh, east of the river at some point, same kind of concerns, I guess. But we, we know that. We, thank you. Yeah, let me reiterate what Ms. Wright said, that we, know we are where we should be at this time. Uh, this is a draft for public comment. We still have the preliminary submittal to go, at which there will be additional opportunity for public comment and revision. And then there will be the final submission, at which there will be opportunity for more public comment. So we are very early in the process, and so we are where we should be. Um, Mr. Chairman, yeah. just a point of clarification, draft master plans normally come in just for final. Oh, just for final, excuse yes. me. I'm sorry. So w still, my point is we are where we need to be. Lots of, lots of time for public comment and consideration and revision. Uh, Mr. May, did you have? Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I just had one parking related question. and, and um, uh, Commissioner Dixon alluded to it, but the residential parking, um, is the, are, are the surrounding neighborhoods actually subject to the residential parking permit program? Are they all control, controlled streets? No one knows on the staff? I mean, can we ask? So, yes, please, maybe from, you need to come to the microphone, I think, if you're going to. There, um, there is some metered parking on Nebraska Avenue and Massachusetts Avenue, but the majority of the neighborhood is RPP. The residential the majority of the neighborhood is, R is RPP mm -hmm. controlled. Yeah. So in theory, if there were good enforcement, then there wouldn't be people parking all day yeah. and going to work. And, and in fact, when we met with Congresswoman Norton, um, that Excuse was an issue that she yourself? raised. I'm oh, I'm sorry. Suzanne Hill with GSA. <laughs> um, when we met with Congresswoman Norton's office, that was one of the issues that she raised is, is there ways that we can maybe look at the metered parking and have that switched over to residential parking um, permitting to alleviate some of these issues. And in fact, our meeting tomorrow with Congresswoman Norton's office is with Department of Public Works, um, MPD, M Metropolitan Police District, um, DCOP, and DDOT are also going to be there. So we, we have quite a big working session tomorrow at Congresswoman Norton's office to address a lot of these issues. Okay. You know, in, in, in future stages, if, if one of the issues that we're going to be concerned about is spillover parking, I think it might be helpful to actually have some, uh, some study of, of what the parking situation is in proximity to the, the, uh, um, this complex because, um, it, you know, some, sometimes it, it, it really is a problem at, at certain times of the day. It may not be at others. It may be in a, in a particular area, but not when you get a couple of blocks away. It's, you know, it's, you know, residential parking where I live is always a, an, an issue because it's, there's a lot of, um, of, um, of density of, of houses and, and cars, um, but you can usually find a parking space within a block or so. Um, but there are other neighborhoods in the city where, you know, it's, or even other parts of my neighborhood where it's a much bigger problem. So it's, I think it varies quite a lot in understanding that, how bad that and bad that problem is, I think might be helpful. Um, I have uh, other comments not having to do with parking, believe it or not, um, having to do with parks. So um, the, uh, uh, 
Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, um, uh, as mentioned before, Glover Archibald Park is uh, uh, adjacent to this site, and it's the area immediately to the, I guess, to the right on a, of what we see on our screen there. Um, and I would just want to mention that um, the Park Service does still have some concerns about buildings that would be constructed uh, adjacent to the parkland, uh, about uh, the stormwater structures that are proposed or the stormwater facilities uh, that are proposed in that area. Um, however, we're quite encouraged by the interactions that we've had on this project, and um, there's been good coordination. In fact, a number of my staff people are out walking the site today um, and learning more and more about it. Um, and uh, I would just uh, recommend that, that that uh, good coordination uh, continue as this project develops. Um, and uh, when it comes time to considering a motion, I would like to add a bullet point relating to continuing coordination with the Park Service. Okay, Fairly you. benign. So. Ms. Greenwald, did you have, Ms. Greenwald, did you have comments? Okay. Uh, Mr. Mr. Dennis, for a follow-up. Yeah, I'd like to get back to Metro again, because it strikes me that the potential Achilles heel for this project at, at the next stage, in fact, for planning throughout the Washington region is whether or not Metro can write itself to get people uh, to uh, decrease the number of auto trips and increase the number of metro trips, uh, you'll have to have some pretty powerful incentives down the road if uh, you're going to do that. And uh, right now, I, I don't know if it, it would be possible under any circumstances. Now, hopefully, General Manager Sarles and Metro getting their act together. It, uh, it remains to be seen. Uh, but I don't know if the escalators work at uh, Tenley Town or, or not. Uh, they don't work at Union Station. One of them is constantly uh, being repaired. Bethesda, of course, was a disaster, still may be. Uh, and um, uh, just coming over here today, I was a little late because of a track malfunction coming uh, not too far away. So I think that uh, we're going to have to hold our breath on planning generally in the Washington area uh, to see if, uh, if Metro can enable us uh, to uh, go forward with the uh, development that is uh, predicated on their uh, functioning as they're supposed to be functioning, which they are not at the present time. Uh, Mr. Miller, uh, Ms. Miller, you want to go first? Yeah. Um, the uh, 1,800 additional seats uh, that this uh, contemplates, uh, where, where, where are they coming from? Um, are they currently in, uh, they're currently in other locations, or are they, are they just new? No, be they, new, they'd, new be, they'd be existing, but they would actually be, uh, and the specific people where they would come from are not identified yet, but they general topics, like uh, general categories of uh, folks, intel, and so on. Those would be the kind of areas that they're looking at right now, consolidating intel functions in one place, um, and so on. But uh, geographically, can you pinpoint at this point where they're, where they're coming from, inside, moving inside the district, or are they coming from Maryland or Virginia locations? Or Let me ask, uh, well, I have a DHS representative here. Let me ask uh, them to address that. Mr. Chairman, my name is Rich McGruder. I'm the director for the Headquarters Consolidation Program for the Department of Homeland Security. The NACMaster plan is a projected growth of the department through FY16. We don't contemplate currently adding any new seats to the to the NAC in our consolidation plan. Can you answer the, the, the geographical question, though, whether they're well? Everybody from that's the projected district? as part of the consolidation program is already in the NCR. Right, but are they coming? Uh, would these would these seats be filled by people who are currently in the District of Columbia, or are they coming from location? Well, that's not location? known. It's they're not, projected. It's growth. not known. So. The folks that are there now are projected to be moved over to the St. Elizabeth's campus. And then we're going to backfill other elements of the department into the spaces here, currently projected at less than 2,500. So the, so the 2,400 that are there now are, 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 would be moving to the uh, St. Elizabeth's West campus? The majority of them would be, the secretary and her support. And so the idea is to collapse uh, commercial leases into federal space and we're not looking at adding any new people at this time. And uh, of the 2,400 that are there now, could, do you know the, uh, where, they, uh, where they currently live? Do, they, do you have the percentages of wh where they live? Uh, I think we have that data. Do, do anybody else? 
Well, we're in 50 different locations, but I think his question is the, um, the, the population that goes to the NAC. Where do they live currently? Virginia. We have it by zip code. Pardon me? It's in the plan. 53% oh. Northern Virginia. Oh, okay. 53% Northern Virginia. Yeah, but those 53% Northern Virginians are going to be commuting over to uh, St. Elizabeth when that project, you know, over the course of time between now and FY16. So where these new people are coming from, I, I don't know. I mean, it's, uh, it's a function of how the department grows and... It's all... Yeah. I'm uh, going to be vastly affected by uh, budget and how we are, a how fast we're able to progress at St. Elizabeth. Yeah. So the whole thing is a, is a sort of a, a matrix that need that every single piece affects the other one. So it doesn't surprise me at all that we don't that that that's not knowable at this point where they're coming from and who's going where. Um, uh, the first piece that the NAC. The, correct me if I'm wrong, Rich. Mm -hmm. The NAC, the NAC um, in the sequence of priorities for DHS and their consolidation plan is secondary to St. Elizabeth. But St. Elizabeth is, is um, slowing down, as it, are, are other projects, because of the budget. So it's, and it will have a huge effect on what happens at the NAC and, who, and who's going where and when. That's correct. Um, can you answer the, I realize that the, it's not going to be the same population, but uh, mm -hmm. I was just trying to get an understanding of um, where people are coming from currently who, who, who work there. Mm -hmm. So 53% live in northern, northern Virginia. How many live in, uh, do you know how many live in Maryland? 35. 35%? 35. So 88%, which is about the percentage for the DHS uh, as a whole. Uh, that ni almost 90% live outside of the District of Columbia. We certainly want to develop programs where you can, where the DHS employees will be able to live near, the, near where they work so that we don't have the traffic uh, uh, problems. And uh, there is a district program uh, that is called Live Near Your Work, which uh, uh, we would hope that the department would somehow be able to participate in and the federal government could somehow support uh, support in funding, uh, helping assist us in our, in our funding that program. Um, I share the concerns that um, uh, Ms. Steingasser expressed about the, about the uncertainty of, of, of the tra transportation management plan at this stage and, 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 the, and the inadequacy of it. Um, so I, I have a discomfort, an unreadiness really to uh, vote in favor of something that says comments favorably on draft master plan. I, 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 if we could take out the word favorably, uh, I, I would be perfectly happy to vote for this, But because there are a lot of concerns that are expressed in this EDR, but then we're commenting favorably upon the draft master plan, which I assume all this has to be, a lot of mitigation has to get, has to be worked out, which hasn't been worked out at all, it seems. Um, so uh, I'm not prepared to vote for this in its current form today, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Provencia and then Ms. Mm -hmm. Greenwald. Just uh, two follow-on comments. What's the current, how would you describe the current uh, mass transit benefit program that DHS has for the uh, employees at the NEC? Uh, Well-supported, 50% participation, low participation? Do we, actually, we, do, we actually don't have a number for actually how many people are actually engaged in that, with, mm -hmm. with, which is the uh, subsidy. Mm -hmm. the yes, yeah. yes. And we don't actually that's, have a that's something I think that we would be uh, welcome to see at uh, future presentations. A part of the, the survey that we're doing right now uh, may capture some of that information, and, and that's currently going on. And mm -hmm. that was that uh, NAC-specific travel survey that uh, Cheryl was talking about. Okay. It's in motion right now. We have a fairly robust program in uh, DOD. We have more than 50% of our 67,000 employees that participate, so we can share some positive lessons learned if you're receptive to that. On the issue, uh, res very respectful of the uh, concern about the, from the surrounding neighborhoods on the overflow parking issue. However, during the normal development process, would not GSA reach out through the public meetings to those groups and have uh, pro provide them an opportunity to, to further articulate their concerns? Yes, or, or, or do we need to make a, an additional amendment similar oh. to what Mr. May was talking about for the 
as Park Service. part of the, the response to the, the public's concerns is, the, and that's what we were talking about with uh, Representative Norton's office, is that mm -hmm. she is facilitating uh, getting together a, a, a transportation uh, community group in which we will talk about all these issues to see how we can, and on a regular basis, meet with representatives from the neighborhood so that we can identify what particular issues they have and then come up with a, a strategy that would mitigate those uh, impacts. Uh, so right now we're working off of some, uh, like, like Cheryl said, we're working off of DHS's entire uh, population survey for the National Capital Region. So that was talking towards the modal split that we were looking at up there. But there's several things that we would have to do specific to the Nebraska Avenue complex in that area that are specific to that neighborhood and that neighborhood's impacts. So these groups would be getting together <coughs> and discussing that. That would then facilitate additions to the transportation management plan. Uh, as Mina had mentioned, that we're just at the early stage right now. Right, sure. And we're just seeking kind of concurrence from you all to move forward so that as we move towards the final master plan, that we have uh, issue, or have addressed a lot of those issues in the transportation management plan, as well as the thing we're doing in parallel, and that's working with DHS and the community on uh, TMP for the immediate Mm -hmm. uh, whether there was a master plan or not to address the immediate concerns of the neighborhood. We appreciate GSA and DHS uh, agreeing to participate with Congressman Norton's office. That would be our, our basic expectation. Our concern was, as opposed to being in a reactive mode, we would actively and proactively reach out to the neighborhood communities. I think if we got that, that assurance, I think that would address some of our concerns. I just wanted to add to Scott's comment. I'm Jim Clark from MTFA Architecture. And um, there have been uh, several meetings uh, with the ANCs directly, um, with ANC 3E and 3D. Uh, and we met with them and we heard the, their comments and uh, we have received comments on the, uh, the draft EIS and are responding to those currently. Initiated um, by your firm or in response it, to? Initiated by GSA and through our firm, Okay, yes. very good, thank you. Uh, in addition uh, to that, we have had two public meetings where the ANCs and the public uh, was, um, was invited and it was well attended and uh, we, we listened again to all their comments. Uh, Ms., let me go to Ms. Greenwald yeah. as promised. I just want to make a couple of points. Um, I could understand um, the reticence, and, and there's, there are issues that we, and we know about it. This is a process of discovery. Um, GSA has demonstrated no inclination to ignore the neighborhood in any way. Um, and we are at 35%. Yes, it is a draft. If we were somehow turning our backs on the um, issues that we're very much aware of, we're working with DDOT, have been, um, I'm, I'm, a little, I, I'm a little confused at the sort of um, resistance to looking at this um, for what it is and where in the process that it is, because I, um, the inference that we're going to just proceed boldly down one path and say thank you very much gratuitously and keep doing what we want to do um, is, doesn't seem warranted here. I don't think we're sending any of those signals at all. Uh, Mr. Chairman? Yeah, let me go to you, and then um, yeah. I think there may be an amendment or two. Yeah, yeah that's right. I'm well, sorry. I'll yield to, yeah. yield let me, to the lady. Let me go to Ms. Greenwald as promised. Yeah. I'm sorry. Um, you guys sort of described what I was going to ask, which is, are there other steps, projects, things you're doing to further the TMP that you haven't already mentioned in, the, you know, in your discussion today? Um, yes, the, this uh, draft 35% master plan was uh, completed in January, and so there's actually been considerable time since then uh, where there's been, I think we've met eight times with DDOT and um, have complied with, I think, everything that they've, they've asked for in order to provide more data. Um, uh, in particular, um, this survey is going on right now to provide more detailed information. Uh, it's due tomorrow, and we're finding that the results are actually very similar to what uh, the, the TMP was based on, on the broader DHS um, results. And so we're finding that, uh, that our assumptions were, were correct. Um, but nevertheless, uh, we will. I know that GSA is, and DHS are committed 
to, uh, to continue to work with DDOT. We have a meeting in, uh, in a week and a half with DDOT, and, and we will continue to meet until um, all of their concerns are addressed. It's a long process. This process is going to last another year and a half, um, and, um, and, and I, I think it's uh, DHS and GSA have really showed uh, that they're proactive at addressing the, the community's concern. Um, I'm a member of that, that community, and so I'm just as concerned <coughs> as, as everybody in that community to make sure that DHS is supportive um, of, um, of, of the whole community. I appreciate that, and, and I have, um, knowing that Ms. Norton is involved in this gives me um, some comfort that I know if uh, she's on top of it, her leadership will help uh, make sure there's consensus and continue to have group meetings where people are in the room together discussing it. Um, as people around this table are thinking of not supporting the EDR, I just want to make sure we all understand what happens if we do not support the EDR. I, I, I think my assumption is you will have to start from square one and I, I'm not sure how that affects DHS's overall consolidation goals. Um, maybe DHS wants to address that, how that um, will just slow everything down. And, and anything from GSA's perspective on that? Well, if, uh, generally, if we, if we don't do anything at all, it's essentially if we don't look at any development of the site, things stay in status quo. And as we understand that that's not an optimum situation. I mean, there's a lot of environmental uh, things that need to be addressed, and there's just things around the site uh, that certainly could be improved. Right now, there is no master plan in place, so there has to be a master plan that, that is implemented so that we can do anything out there. Um, so that's why we're, that has a lot to do with what we're, uh, how we're generating this master plan, as well as facilitating the mission of DHS. Mm -hmm. um, certainly, they can speak in more detail about the criticality of, D, of this particular component to their overall housing strategy for the NCR. Uh, but definitely in their consolidation strategy, whatever that timeline may be, this is certainly a major component of that uh, to facilitate you know, their overall uh, housing needs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, St. Elizabeth is certainly a big component of that, uh, but the, the, the Nebraska Avenue <coughs> complex uh, serves, will serve a vital function and role for them. Mm -hmm. So if we don't do anything, uh, then there's a lot of those same issues that are going to plague the community that are going to affect the site, the buildings. So there's a lot of issues. Uh, the master plan tries to address a lot of those, and this is, this is why this is kind of brought to the spotlight that we've actually started to develop plans and strategies to do something at the site. This is where the community's voice has actually had the opportunity to be heard by us, by DHS, so it actually has motivated people to do something about it. Uh, without this process in place, then they just will still be facing the same issues, you know, year after year after year. So. Does DHS have anything they want to add? Hi, I'm Carol Mitten, and I, um, I'm the Executive Director for Urban Affairs and Headquarters Consolidation for DHS. Um, you know, I think the questions about what would we do if, if this were not approved today, in some ways, we, we will proceed on as we would if you um, passed the recommendation from the Executive Director, because the feedback that we've been getting, as has been said, is going to guide the master plan. The, the community concerns that have been raised, they're perfectly legitimate. I mean, we should be doing better about how we manage transportation at the NAC. We're crafting an interim plan to deal with the population that's there now. As um, Rich said, when we look ahead to the population that will be at the NAC after we move to St. Elizabeth, that's going to be a different population. So why are we sur surveying the people now? It's because we want to manage those people better. Uh, we, have, we have more staff devoted to developing transportation management plans hmm. at DHS now than we've ever had before. And I have to say it's because of St. Elizabeth's that we've been sensitized to it mm -hmm. because we know we have a very aggressive, um, a, 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 the TMP that's going to get us to where we need to be on St. Elizabeth's has to be very aggressive. Mm. And the TMP that's going to help us manage the NAC better has to be very aggressive. And we're trying to implement policies across the NCR that will get us there. <laughs> so, um, you know, we will take all the feedback that we've been given and, um, and utilize it. And, you know, we'd like, uh, you know, I, I think the strategy about not, not commenting favorably, just commenting, that's very instructive for us. 
and we'll come back with a better plan. Um, I had one last question um, for either of you. Um, anecdotally, I've heard that the conditions at the NAC are not very good. Can, can somebody address sort of the conditions of the buildings and the workspace for DHS employees currently and the need to upgrade them? There's a tremendous need to update, and we have focused on transportation, but these other needs, having worked on buildings uh, in the site, uh, are dramatic and, and there needs to be a master plan to guide the process. Uh, the, it is a very precious historic site uh, for two reasons. One, it, it was historic from a, as a, uh, the first um, girls' school in the U.S. that really instructed um, girls uh, for leadership. And secondly, because <coughs> it, it's of its role um, in cryptanalysis during World War II. And there are some significant, uh, there is a significant historic building on site, and there are uh, significant uh, buildings that contribute to this historic site. And they're in, in very bad shape and really need the master plan to, uh, to clean up the site and to, to, to preserve them, frankly. Um, stormwater management, as was uh, mentioned earlier, is a, a grave issue on the site. There is virtually no stormwater management uh, on the site. And, and this site backs up and slopes towards uh, Archibald Glover Park. And so that needs to be addressed. And the master plan um, addresses it uh, under GSA's guidelines of, of sustainability. And the goal is a, a gold lead uh, master plan. And so the, these are just some of the things, very significant things, that the uh, letting the master plan progress uh, will allow us to, to progress and to, to refine as we we look at this for the next uh, year and a half. Thank you. I, I think um, along the lines of what the chairman said before, that this plan is is a draft, and you know they are where they should be in the scheme of things. And and I think that both GSA and DHS have shown willingness and already efforts underway to deal with the transportation issues that I think everyone around this table recognizes and they recognize. So. I, I will be supporting the EDR as written. Um, I would not, <laughs> perhaps there are ways we can ask GSA to continue to update the commission on its efforts on an interim plan, transportation management plan, and as they look forward on a long-term plan um, as a compromise position, perhaps. Thank you, Ms. Greenwald. Let me do a couple of things first. Um, First, let me call on Mr. Acosta, who may have a clarifying point. Second, I'll go to Mr. Dixon, who had uh, a comment. And then third, as I think there may be an amendment or two floating around, I would like to entertain a motion on the EDR so that we can get it before <coughs> us in an amendable state. Uh, first, Mr. Acosta. Yes, I'd just like to uh, clarify a couple points. I think um, in terms of the action that is before you today, it is approval of comments to GSA regarding the preliminary draft plan that they submitted uh, to the commission. And so you understand uh, if you do not approve or don't take any action today, there will be no comments that we're submitting to GSA and there will be no official commission position. Whether you have concerns regarding transportation, mm. traffic, mm. transit, or any of these mm. issues, uh, we will be silent on the issue because there will be no action taken. So my suggestion would be, um, there's a recommendation in front of you. Obviously, there are more, there are additional concerns about transportation that may, should be reflected in this. Uh, you could also ask if GSA is willing to come back before the submission, uh, submission of a final plan to come in and talk about some of their findings with respect to the survey and the TMP and the progress that they've been making with the community. Uh, so at least you're brought up to date uh, before they submit something final. And I think um, if they're willing to do so, I think that would be a helpful step uh, because as we, as they acknowledge some of these uh, items have not been completed, uh, the TMP is still in formation. They're still uh, doing their work. And I think it would be helpful for uh, the commission to hear um, the results of some of their findings uh, prior to submitting a plan. So at least you have some of that information. And if you have additional comments, uh, you could ask for that so they could accommodate that uh, as part of their final submission. So mm -hmm. I think those things would be helpful. This is to be, um, I think to have constructive comments to give back to GSA and DHS would actually be a helpful thing. And if you hear from the community uh, that they have uh, s concerns about offsite parking and other issues, I think that would also be something you want to amplify uh, in your comments back to uh, GSA. And that uh, hopefully that's something you'll be looking at as you review the final plan. 
Yeah. Mr. Dixon. Mr. Chairman, I have two, three comments. One, uh, just want you all to know there's a lot of housing in Anacostia, so you guys can start looking to move there so right away. And number two, we'd like to get uh, some steady funding for Metro Hill so we can be sure we can keep the service and make it work. That's, those are just quick ones. The last, I, I think people get a little too lathered up about this. I don't sense there's any uh, likelihood this is not going to pass. It's just that there are people who spent time to come here from our community who are still got some questions. And I believe they're in good hands. I think you guys are going to do it. GSA has always been very good about this. We got the point. But there's some of us here who have to make sure that these citizens understand that we want, you know, if we, if we have this unanimous vote on this, then where's the mark, the record, the indicator that we have concerns that were expressed? And everybody has those concerns. So, I mean, if you lose two or three votes because folks just want to make the point that we want to be sure it's done and we believe it will be done, but it's, sometimes you have to, you know, do that. This is the only forum on this issue that the community has an opportunity to speak. They can't take it to the city council. They can't take it to the zoning. It's here. So when they come here to speak on issues, we want to make sure that they're noted. And sometimes a vote against something is just a note we want it to go forward, but we want you to be sure there's some concern and we'll know it's going to be resolved. At least I hope it will be and expect it to be. But uh, there's no need to try to, we know nobody's lobbying anybody here to vote. We're just saying, look, we may want to make the, a minority position in the Supreme Court and in my study of the law. It's sometimes an important position, just to be on the record, a minority position that we were concerned about something which we are concerned about. So that's finished. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Dixon. The, uh, so that we can have further actionable discussion, exactly. the chair would entertain a motion on the EDR. So moved. It's been moved. Uh, second. And seconded. It's been moved and seconded that the EDR be uh, approved. Now, further discussion. Mr. May. Um, yeah, I'm, I would, uh, I'm, I'm actually sorry that uh, Mr. Dixon moved so quickly to, to make the motion because I was going to shock my friends over at DHS and GSA by making the motion to approve this uh, report. Um, of course, knowing that we still have a final action to take on this, but uh, um, I, and I would just say that uh, you know I think overall this is a very good plan. It's been uh, it's well thought out and sensitive to the context. It's responding to the right things. It's dealing with uh, EISA 438 and. We are all trying to address that um, in the federal government. It's, uh, um, you know, making the appropriate moves from a historic preservation point of view. And most importantly, it's increasing the number of, of uh, people who will be working at this site, um, but at the same time bumping the parking ratio up to the point where it, uh, it complies with the comprehensive plan. And the net result is that there are no additional cars that are going to be coming and parking on the campus. Now. Granted, there's probably more that needs to be done to make sure that, you know, the category that was not on the sheet, which was drives to work but does not park at work, uh, <laughs> parks in the neighborhood or whatever it is, I mean, that's not shown or, um, and I think, you know, obviously something needs to be done to get a handle on that. But I think that, that for every other reason that we think is important about approving master plans like this, this one is hitting all the marks. Okay. So I don't, it, it's, it's almost baffling to me that this doesn't get, uh, would not get a unanimous approval. Uh, as it is, of course, with one small amendment, which I will now <laughs> propose. <laughs> I will withdraw mine if you want to make another amendment. <laughs> That's okay. I think they got the point. Um, anyway, uh, I would just add a bullet point that um, recommending that uh, the uh, that DHS and GSA or wh whoever it is um, continue to work with the National Park Service to assure that potential impacts to uh, Grover Archibald Park are minimized and mitigated. And I phrase it that way, minimized and mitigated, because first has to be minimized, and then once it's determined that there is some sort of impact, that there be appropriate mitigation. I would accept that as a friendly amendment to my motion. Well, it's been moved. If you've got a motion, you can accept the amendment. I'm the mover, so I'm accepting there's a change to my motion. Okay, it's been moved. Well, you moved it. Yep. He, he Mr. moved it, Mr. and I, I, I seconded it and offered a friendly amendment. So, okay, it. and might you uh, once again kind of restate uh, your my, my my addition just so that okay. we have it fairly. So, um, uh, continue to work with the National Park Service to assure that potential impacts to Glover Archibald Park are minimized and mitigated, or what cannot be minimized is mitigated. Maybe that's the better way to put it. Ms. Young, you have that? Sure. Okay. Ms. Wright. I'd like to talk about something other than cars, just for <laughs> one moment, okay. for something new and different. Um, 
I, I just, I, I would be remiss if I did not comment on the, um, on the recommendation to evaluate a lower security level. And, and now I'm, I'm not, I'm not even speaking from the DHS perspective, and I'm sure they have one. Um, uh, I would ask as an, uh, as an urbanist to, for everyone to think about um, what this means. Um, if you were to make this a level four or lower, um, it is a campus. It has historically functioned as one. Um, putting a level five facility in here seems to me it has all of the it, all of the right circumstances. Um, level five facilities have to go somewhere, and um, imagine the alternatives to putting a level five facility with however many people end up or seats end up in it in the middle of. Um, Oh, I don't know, downtown, to be really extreme. This, the, uh, topographically, um, and within the, the existing um, street grid, it has all the, um, all the right moves to become, and to, to accommodate all the things that come with a level five facility. Um, so I would hope that while I guess we can look at it, but I don't know why we would, really. Um, because it's so accommodating to with the setbacks, et cetera. So I just wanted to talk about something other than traffic. So that's all I got. Uh, Mr. Hart, did you have anything? <coughs> I think most of the uh, issues that I was concerned about with respect to stormwater management, addressing transportation management plan and traffic along with that have already been addressed. I want to say that uh, it's encouraging to see a development of a master plan that really does try to create a, a campus feel, uh, an opportunity to create pedestrian zones, and uh, I like it. I'm just happy somebody's submitting us a master plan finally. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, what happens. Okay, hearing no further, I'm sorry, Mr. Miller. When, when is the TMP for the current site going to be complete? And when is the TMP for the um, proposed master plan going to be complete? If, if, if you're under, under the current schedule. Well, currently, in, in reference to the TMP that for the current condition, that's in progress right now. And I think... Um, pro six months out that we probably should have that current TMP uh, implemented, embedded, based on community input in the, in the working groups that are in place right now. That's the one that we would use to uh, affect the change right now. Uh, for the long term, the, the TMP that we've got uh, originally was at about 75 or so uh, percent of information gathering. We got information from the community, so that's now adding to it. We also have uh, CFA, NCPC, uh, D dot uh, Park Service. So we've got additional inputs into that through the EIS process. So now we're going to take that information and start to go through that TMP again and see where we need to make that more robust and address the mitigation strategies. So we haven't actually sat down and projected that out. That's in the next round uh, of our uh, schedule development is to actually look at what we have to do to implement more strategies in the TMP, talk with our consultant to figure out you know how much time they're going to need to do that, uh, but then we can also we can always get back to you and, and give you that information that tells you here's our revised schedule based on what we just sat down and, and discussed. Uh, but obviously we want to do that soon because that will have an impact on the EIS as well. I'm just trying to understand if if if, if how how uh, if we deferred approval until we solve the, the TMP with all of its strategies. Uh, how, how that, if, 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 if that would have a detrimental impact on the uh, planning. It, would, it, would see, it seemed that would be the pro point that we would be, I would be more comfortable approving a draft master plan when I saw the strategies and mitigation measures, uh, whether they're stormwater management or, or, and the transportation management uh, and offsite parking management. Um, I'd just like to see how, I, I don't believe you can get, to, I, I don't really 
believe you can get to that one to four ratio because I don't see anything that gets you there. Uh, in, in what's in front of me, at least. Um, maybe it's in a draft TMP that I, I haven't looked at, but I don't see it. So I want to be able to uh, maybe craft an amendment. I thought an amendment was coming to, from, from somewhere over on my right uh, that would have that might have accomplished what I what I'm what, I, what I'm trying to get at here. But uh, it's not coming. Um, if you could just give me a minute, maybe I can craft something. Sure. And while you're working, uh, might we want to go ahead and discuss uh, a time for uh, you to revisit us on an interim basis to give us a, an update? Uh, Mr. Costa, uh, uh, might you have a suggestion as to when appropriate timing would be uh, in the great scheme of things? While they're conferring, Mr. May? Um, I just wanted to comment. You know, we, we uh, accepted the notion that for the St. Elizabeth's campus, which is a lot further from Metro and has a lot more parking entanglements uh, and, uh, and vehicle entanglements, and, uh, just a whole lot more issues. There was a, you know, a piece of parkland that you had to drive an access road through. I mean, all of these things, it was a much, much more complicated thing, but yet this commission wholeheartedly believed that one to four parking ratio was achievable. Here, it seems eminently achievable. And I'm, I, it, it, again, it's baffling to me that, that we would think that somehow it, was, it would be doubtful in this circumstance. If it can be achieved anywhere, it should be able to be achieved here. And, and if I could, there, uh, in talking with the consultant, they're projecting out that probably within about two months, maybe three at the latest, that we would have a revised uh, TMP. Okay. Uh, two to three months, not to exceed. That's for revise. I think there may be a, an interest in having a brief update at some point. Uh, Mr. Costa, do you have a suggestion? I would say that's probably the right time to come in. Oh, that would be the right time. Right. Well, at least to bring in some of the quest uh, questions and um, that to fill in some of the gaps that were identified in this uh, discussion, I think they would have a lot of the answers. Is this, is this idea through staff consultation or through another formal commission meeting? I'd made a suggestion, at least because there's um, some discomfort here in terms of not knowing exactly what the, you know, what where we're at with the TMP and some of the survey results, at least to come in and just give the commission a quick update in terms of, you know, the status of that. And yes. also some of these discussions going on with the community. And we've done that before with applicants, so at least to bring the commission up to date on questions that they've raised in the past. And I think there'll be ongoing staff consultation as part of it. Uh, and I think the uh, specific timing of that, I think we could determine once your consultants have finished their work and, um, and there's a comfort level at uh, GSA to, to bring it forward. But I think it's really to make sure that your questions are addressed and that you know, they are moving forward in a direction that you're comfortable in with respect to uh, some of the questions you raised for the TMP. But the interim update would be before they come back for, for, final. The, for the final. Yeah. Mr. Hart or Mr. Miller, Mr. Hart? Yeah, in, in response to Mr. Miller's comments, um, it was my observation that this is really not a draft of the master plan. It's really, in my mind, more a presentation of the concept and direction. And if it were a draft of the master plan, it would include at least draft sections for the TMP, traffic, and stormwater management. So um, I'm comfortable if, if we're going to see this again before it becomes a final uh, master plan, if we see the drafts of those types of components. Um, and if we're confident we're going to see that, then I'm okay with the EDR as it's uh, written and amended. I just uh, wanted to point out that, that the TMP was included in the, uh, in the uh, master plan uh, that you have right now. We do have a, a draft version of the TMP that's, that was moved forward. <clears throat> Are there any further discussion? Let me try this. Um, uh, I'd like to try to move an amendment that um, instead of the phrase comments favorably on the draft master plan, um, I would rephrase that to find that the draft master plan for the Nebraska Avenue complex is incomplete and recommends that GSA uh, submit resubmit the draft master plan upon completion and submission of a revised transportation management plan. 
that would be my um, amendment, Mr. Chairman. That comes by way of a motion. Yes, I would. I, I would move that. Uh, I'll second it for you, Rob. Thanks. It's been moved and seconded. Is there discussion on that amendment? Would not by its very nature a draft be incomplete? No. That's why we call it a, a draft. Not hearing further comment. Uh, all those in favor of Mr. Miller's uh, amendment say aye. 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 Opposed, no. 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 Um, those who vote aye, raise your hand. One, two, three, four. And for purposes of make sure we got it, for those who vote no, raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six. The motion fails on a vote of four to six. We now have the um, EDR as amended before us. It has been properly moved and seconded uh, as amended. Is there a, uh, so all, the, all in favor of the EDR as amended say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. no. I'm sorry. No. We did not vote on the First Amendment. We have not adopted the First Amendment. It was proposed as a friendly amendment and I and it was accepted. I accepted as part of my amendment. Would you be more comfortable if we had a vote on it? Yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so this is with the friendly amendment about the park service. Yes. Yes. Like nicely with the park service. Yes. Ms. Ms. Young, would you like to read that amendment? Recommends that DHS and GSA continue to work with NPS to ensure that potential impacts to Glover Arch Archibald Park are minimized and mitigated. Assure. 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 Does does not the uh, the final wording though mitigation raise that to a much higher standard of compliance other than just no the idea is simply that the the impacts would be minimized and anything that could not be minimized would be mitigated. So you made a motion on second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All in favor of that amendment say aye. 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 Opposed, no. One no. Mr. Provencia. And now, the EDR as amended is before you. All in favor of the EDR as amended say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. 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 No's raise your hand. Mr. Beltran, Mr. Miller, Ms. Steingasser, and Mr. Dixon. So the EDR as amended passes. Thank you very much, Ms. Kelly. Thank you very much. Agenda item 5B is the draft master plan of the Joint Base Anacostia Bowling, and we have Mr. Weil before us. Welcome. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the commission. Uh, this is a draft master plan for uh, the Joint Base Anacostia Bowling uh, installation in southwest uh, Washington, D.C., submitted by the United States Department of the Navy for commission comments. So uh, Joint Base uh, Anacostia Bowling, or JBAB, is uh, shown here in blue, located to the south of uh, downtown Washington, D.C., uh, adjacent to the, the confluence of the Anacostia and Potomac Rivers, uh, directly adjacent to uh, I-295 and South Capitol Street, uh, and very close to the, um, the, the uh, federal um, secure campus of St. Elizabeth's, which is currently under construction. So the, the draft master plan was, uh, was started in reaction to the, um, uh, to the 2005 Base Realignment Closure Act, uh, which uh, mandated the merging of these uh, three separate installations, NSC, uh, NSF Anacostia, Bowling Air Force Base, and Bellevue Housing Complex, which is Navy housing. Um, the BRAC uh, uh, Act, uh, uh, basically mandated the, the joining into a joint base to create a more uh, efficient, um, cost-effective installation. So here are the major ma master plan assumptions. Uh, first of all, this is more of a framework plan. Uh, most of the projects contained in the plan are, are hypothetical. Uh, they're, they're at the conceptual stage at this point, with the exception of these three, um, these 
three defined projects, uh, which are short term, uh, un either under construction currently or, or sh short term. Uh, the master plan assumes an employment population increase of 25%, uh, a, a total employee parking reduction of approximately 400 spaces, uh, which would bring the current employee parking ratio up from a 1 to 1.66 up to a 1.2. Uh, 0.42 uh, employee ratio. And again, the, the, the master plan assumes the, the merging of uh, these three installations, which actually uh, occurred last year on October 1st. So basically, the significant components of, of the master plan, uh, first of all, there's an urban design framework plan, which uh, uh, separates JBAB uh, into eight different uh, neighborhoods. Uh, each of the neighborhoods has its goals, uh, and also its uh, de design standards. Uh, the second major element is a future land use plan for JBAB, uh, consisting of a total of uh, seven land uses. And there's also a landscape plan, which uh, specifies uh, more specific landscape design standards for uh, different districts around JBAB, uh, and uh, in addition to those districts, uh, special areas and also uh, 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 specific landscape criteria for uh, three levels of, of the interior roadways, the primary, secondary, and tertiary roadways. <coughs> These are the planning objectives that, that the draft master plan is, is framed around. Uh, and in the next series of slides, I'll go through uh, each objective one by one and, and discuss how the master plan uh, supports each, each of these objectives. So the first objective, uh, this is uh, the existing land use map uh, uh, consisting of, of uh, nine different land uses. Uh, there's a lot of redundancy uh, between uh, Anacostia, um, the Anacostia portion of JBAB and, and bowling portions of JBAB. And so what, what the draft master plan seeks to do is, is consolidate some of the land uses into seven. Uh, and also merge some of these more redundant uses um, that, that uh, uh, existed on, uh, in, in the separate facilities uh, pre-BRAC. Number two, uh, the plan seeks to increase development density in key locations. Uh, specifically, the master plan identifies three. Uh, this north administrative uh, ma uh, mi uh, mission complex located uh, directly adjacent to South Capitol Street. Uh, and also two uh, corridors in the heart of JBAB. Uh, the master plan seeks to densify these, these areas and create more of a pedestrian-oriented uh, streetscape uh, along uh, McCord Street uh, and Castle Avenue. Uh, and then uh, the master plan identifies a pedestrian extension uh, from ca uh, Castle Avenue. Uh, the master plan seeks to foster multimodal uh, transportation uh, within JBAB. Uh, here it identifies a future uh, planned shuttle system uh, along with a number of planned future stops. And the shuttle system would support uh, an enhanced and expanded pedestrian and bicycle uh, network within JBAB. Uh, this this uh, uh, pedestrian bike infrastructure would consist of bike lanes, uh, multi-use trails, and, and also uh, bring uh, basically the, the existing uh, sidewalks up to ADA compliance and, and create more of a, uh, a pedestrian-oriented uh, environment on the base. The master plan uh, protects and enhances uh, historic resources. There's currently uh, an archaeological survey ongoing on JBAB, uh, and, and so the master plan, plan is, is identifying all the existing historic resources on the base. Uh, it also uh, identifies and seeks to preserve the historic core area of the installation. And also uh, through the, ma uh, the landscape plan, uh, the landscape plan has a specific component uh, with, with landscape standards that uh, are intended to enhance and, and, and uh, uh, preserve the, the existing character of the historic residential district. Uh, the draft plan has a sustainability component in which it outlines a, a pretty wide variety of uh, sustainability strategies that uh, future JBAB development uh, should adhere to, such as rain barrels, uh, vegetated bioswales, green roofs, uh, and porous pavement, um, bicycle storage, and, and more pedestrian-friendly, uh, walkable um, uh, urban design. 
Number seven, uh, the draft master plan seeks to enhance views to and from the installation. Uh, in particular, it identifies two key uh, perspectives off the installation, uh, and it shows some, some massing diagrams of what potential future uh, development could look like. Uh, here, this is the perspective from the Frederick Douglass Bridge looking south into JBAB. And here, here's some potential future development uh, and what that might look like from, from Haynes Point looking into the facility. And the eighth uh, planning objective, the, the master plan seeks to protect and enhance the waterway, uh, uh, waterfront greenway. Um, here you can see in the existing land use map, there's a, uh, a, a discontinuous uh, uh, waterfront kind of open space recreational area. And the, the master plan tries to unify uh, this open, more open um, recreational uh, area, so it's it's more continuous along the waterfront. So with that, uh, staff analyzed uh, the three components of the submission, the draft master plan, the transportation management plan, and the environmental assessment. Uh, we found several things uh, that, that we, we felt were promising, uh, such as strategies that attempted to limit visual impacts on, on the surrounding communities landscaping standards that would help reinforce the character of JBAB neighborhoods, and, and uh, a pretty good variety of sustainability strategies for uh, future JBAB development. However, there were a number of issues uh, with the environmental assessment uh, and TMP and, and master plan as well, uh, and I'll go through these issues one by one now. Uh, first of all, the, the EA was, was inadequate because uh, it, it really didn't have a, a cumulative impacts analysis. Uh, in particular, uh, the fact that the EA um, uh, identified uh, future development and its impact on roadways and traffic as being minor or moderate uh, indicates the fact that, that really there was not a, a future traffic conditions analysis performed. Uh, such a conditions analysis would uh, not only account for uh, future potential JBAB traffic, uh, but also uh, other east of the river, uh, local nearby developments such as Poplar Point, Berry Farms, and St. Elizabeth's, uh, and also future planned um, infrastructure improvements. Uh, a future uh, traffic conditions analysis would uh, uh, assess the impacts of, of uh, reclassifying uh, the first Sterling gate as the primary uh, truck gate and also account for that increased uh, truck, truck traffic through that gate and also recognize the fact that uh, you know there are there are several planned infrastructure improvements in the area such as uh, a realignment of the South Capitol Street um, and, and Frederick Douglass Bridge alignment. And you can see from this graphic that one of the potential alternatives identifies a traffic circle and uh, the right-of-way would, would uh, cut across um, JBAB land. In addition, uh, staff identified an inadequate transportation management plan. Uh, it, it appeared as if it had a good start uh, looking at some of the existing conditions. Uh, however, again, uh, it did not consider future um, the, the future growth of JBAB in terms of the traffic uh, impacts on, on the local community. Um, it, it didn't do a, it was inadequate in, in looking at uh, not only the existing alternative travel patterns to JBAB, but also how people would get there in the future looking at uh, the shuttle system and, and walking and bicycling. Um, it, it did not uh, outline uh, specific detailed TMP goals and objectives. Uh, to measure um, JBABs, future JBABs transportation management uh, travel demand efforts. Uh, there was no discussion of how visitors, residents, and, and delivery traffic would uh, reach uh, JBAB in the future. And there really appeared to be uh, a lack of, of coordination between DDOT, uh, GSA, DHS, uh, and, and Metro in, in putting together the transportation management plan. And staff uh, recognizes an opportunity uh, with St. Elizabeth's located so close to JBAB, uh, which does have a very detailed, robust transportation management plan to uh, coordinate future JBAB uh, transportation management planning efforts with St. Elizabeth's. And lastly, uh, one, one area of focus in the future 
uh, is the fact that uh, the draft master plan proposes a 1 to 2.42 uh, employee parking ratio. Uh, and more importantly, the TMP does not demonstrate uh, why JBAB is unable to comply with uh, the 2004 comprehensive plan uh, 1 to 4 ratio, uh, which, which it, it, it should either meet or demonstrate that uh, the installation is unable to meet that. So as such, it is the executive director's recommendation to the commission to provide several comments on the draft master plan for JBAB. Uh, number one, to comment favorably on the inclusion of development strategies that limit the visual impacts uh, of future-based development on surrounding communities, uh, on the plan's landscaping standards that help to preserve the character of existing joint-based neighborhoods, uh, and the sustainability chapter, which promotes a wide variety of uh, uh, sustainability-oriented strategies for future-based development. And to comment unfavorably on the proposed employee parking ratio of 1 to 2.42, uh, which does exceed the 2004 comprehensive plan ratio of 1 to 4, uh, since the TMP does not justify why joint base Anacostia bowling will not meet the comprehensive plan parking ratio of 1 to 4 uh, for this location. And the master plan environmental assessment does not analyze uh, an alternative that, that meets that 1 to 4 parking ratio. And the Commission notes that the uh, JBAB environmental assessments cumulative impact section is required to consider the cumulative impacts of growing JBAB when considered with other planned development, such as that at St. Elizabeth's and Poplar Point, and that the joint uh, based Anacostia Bowling ma Master Plan should indicate a level, uh, the level of NEPA review that will be conducted at the project level following completion of the Master Plan, and encourages the Navy to work with the Department of Homeland Security and GSA to explore the possibility of developing and managing a coordinated TMP for, for JBAB in St. Elizabeth's. And to recommend that uh, the JBAB master plan be revised to acknowledge uh, and the design of the North Administrative Mission Complex should reflect the possibility of a future realignment of South Capitol Street uh, and the Frederick Douglass Memorial Bridge. And lastly, uh, the Commission requests the following additional information in the final uh, JBAB master plan is outlined in NCPC's master plan submission guidelines. Um, and I, I won't read through all this text, but I'll, I'll try to summarize. Uh, basically, the TMP needs more detailed information on uh, existing as well as future conditions, uh, including much more detailed information about uh, alternative non-single occupant vehicle modes, uh, more clearly defined TMP goals and objectives, uh, a more detailed process of how JBAB will better coordinate their future uh, travel demand management planning uh, with uh, DDOT, Metro, and St. Elizabeth's, uh, and to demonstrate how JBAB can comply with the one to four comprehensive plan parking ratio. Um, we require more information related to visitors, residents, and delivery traffic, uh, a more detailed summary information about existing and future development uh, on JBAB, and lastly, a more detailed uh, analysis of the master plan's potential effects on uh, historic resources in completion of the Section 106 project, or process, excuse me. And that concludes my presentation. I'm available for questions, uh, and the Navy also has representation to answer any questions as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Before we proceed, I'd like to go ahead and call on uh, Carol Mitten from the Department of Homeland Security. She has. Um, signed up to speak as representing DHS. Uh, Ms. Mitten will have five minutes. Um, at the end of her public comment, um, we will bring the discussion back. And I'll note that I believe it's Lieutenant Colonel McClure is here today who can, or perhaps others as well, who will uh, be available to engage with the commission on questions and discussion. Uh, Ms. Mitten, welcome. Thank you. I don't know if I have enough copies. There's a few more. As I said earlier, uh, my name is Carol Mitten, and I bid you good afternoon. Um, I'm here today to testify on behalf of the Department of Homeland Security regarding uh, Joint Base Anacostia Bowling, and the irony of me testifying about this is not lost on me. <coughs> DHS is opposed to the master plan for Joint Base Anacostia Bowling as currently proposed. The plan will negatively impact the transportation network that serves not only the Joint Base but St. Elizabeth's campus. In the case of Firth Sterling Avenue, the negative impact will be severe, and that's basically our main access point at St. Elizabeth's. We ask the Commission to require the Navy to provide further analysis and proposed mitigation related to the following three areas. 
the truck screening at the Firth Sterling Gate, the lack of accommodation of the Frederick Douglass Bridge realignment, and the cumulative impacts related to increased traffic to and from the Joint Base. The proposal by the Navy to shift truck traffic from the South Gate to the Firth Sterling Gate has the potential to gridlock traffic along Firth Sterling Avenue during peak periods. Truck screening at the Firth Sterling Gate will force most of the truck traffic serving the Joint Base onto Firth Sterling Avenue, which is the worst possible route that could be selected in the context of the transportation network. From the analysis that has been done in support of the NEPA compliance for St. Elizabeth's, we know that with the introduction of the West Access Road and the related St. Elizabeth's traffic, as well as the, as the overall increase in traffic, by 2030, intersections along Firth Sterling Avenue will deteriorate to failing. Some intersections will fail as early as 2016. The most heavily impacted intersection will be Firth Sterling Avenue and South Capitol Street. As if that information isn't bad enough, there are three important factors to recognize in relying on the St. Elizabeth's traffic analysis to draw conclusions about the impact of increased truck traffic from the joint base. First, our analysis did not include the proposed shift in truck traffic to the Firth Sterling Gate, which will not only impact Firth Sterling Avenue in general, but its intersection with South Capitol Street. We didn't factor in increased visitor traffic at the Firth Sterling Gate, so it's not only truck traffic, it's visitor traffic. And third, our analysis anticipated completion of the Frederick Douglass Bridge in the proposed realignment and related improvements by 2030. So we asked the Commission to require the Navy to analyze the specific impacts on the transportation network serving the Joint Base, especially the intersections along Firth Sterling Avenue that will be created by shifting the truck screening facility to the Firth Sterling Gate and to propose mitigation measures. We also suggest that the Commission request specific estimates of the visitor trips that will be redirected and their impact on the levels of service of intersections along Firth Sterling Avenue. The master plan for the joint base does not accommodate the long proposed realignment of the Frederick Douglass Bridge, as was noted by Mr. Weil. Not only do, does this deficiency impact the transportation network, but it precludes a potential solution to the truck traffic issue that I just described. The extensive transportation analysis that has been done for St. Elizabeth's shows that Notwithstanding the mitigations that will be made in support of our project and others, traffic in the immediate vicinity of the joint base will generally get worse in the future because of increased overall demand. And as I mentioned above, the analysis that leads to that conclusion takes into consideration that the Fred Frederick Douglass Bridge and related improvements have been completed. So at a minimum, if the joint base will not accommodate the realignment of the bridge, they should be required to analyze how much worse the transportation network will be without those improvements. The District Department of Transportation has been in discussions for years about the realignment of the bridge and the impact on the joint base. As a part of the bridge realignment and to mitigate impacts to the joint base, DDOT has proposed to create a separate truck access from the highway network at the north end of the joint base. This would be separate from the Firth Sterling Gate. This access point has at least three benefits. It supports a truck access at the north end of the base, which is what they want. It separates the truck traffic from the other traffic accessing the north gate, like the pedestrians who will be using the streetcar. And it will eliminate the requirement for joint base related truck traffic to use Firth Sterling Avenue. This alternative truck access is neither discussed nor analyzed in the master plan. So we asked the Commission to require the Navy to analyze the impacts on the transportation network that will result if the Frederick Douglass Bridge is not reconstructed according to the, re the um, proposed realignment. Further, we ask you to require the Navy to analyze the alternative truck access proposed by DDOT as part of the bridge realignment and explain why using the Firth Sterling Gate is a superior approach. As I mentioned above, the transportation analysis for St. Elizabeth's shows that the network in the vicinity of the joint base will be increasingly burdened over time. In peak periods, a consequential part of that burden will be related to traffic coming to and from the joint base. 
The master plan states that because there will be no increase. Please finish. Thank you. In the number of parking spaces, an expansion in the number of employees at the base by as much as 25% will not generate any additional traffic. A sophisticated traffic analysis is not required to show that this statement is not correct. The master plan indicates that there is substantial underutilization of parking spaces in certain locations on the joint base at present. In addition, the intent to relocate those parking areas over time into more convenient locations is to, in order to facilitate increasing the utilization rate. Simple math would indicate that the same number of parking spaces with a higher utilization rate equals more cars even without increasing the number of employees. The Commission knows that DHS has committed to achieving the one to four parking ratio required for St. Elizabeth's, and we know that an aggressive TMP will be required to achieve that ratio. But we recognize that in a location like St. Elizabeth's or the Joint Base, more parking begets more traffic. There is no reason that the Joint Base cannot achieve the recommended parking ratio of one to four and actually reduce traffic to the Joint Base. We ask the Commission to require the Navy to analyze the impa impact of the increased traffic from increased utilization of existing parking and to, promote, to, to propose mitigation measures. Further, we ask the Commission to require the Joint Base to explain why, why they cannot achieve the one to four parking ratio standard that will be achieved at St. Elizabeth's, which is also in the EDR. The concerns that we've expressed today about the insufficiency of the transportation analysis offered in support of the Joint Base Master Plan stem from the fact that we, in conjunction with GSA, have analyzed the transportation network in this area. Our analysis, all of which has been shared with staff from the Joint Base, does not support the conclusions drawn by the Navy regarding the impacts from the location of the truck screening facility at the Firth Sterling Gate, the lack of accommodation of the realignment of the Frederick Douglass Bridge, and the cumulative impacts to the network of increased traffic to the base. We hope the Commission shares our concerns and will require ad adequate analysis and mitigation before allowing the master plan to be finalized. We have offered and we continue to offer to collaborate with the Navy in their transportation planning efforts. And we think that the NCPC staff recommendation for a joint effort on coordinated TMP strategies, not a joint plan, would be beneficial. So the bottom line for us is we want St. Elizabeth's to be a success and we think some of the um, issues raised by the joint base master plan will needlessly um, handicap, up, handicap us in achieving a success at St. Elizabeth's. So I thank you for your time and thank you for the additional time and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Ms. Bitten, very much. No, yes, sir. My question is, uh, given the uh, presentation by the staff, the one comment you had particular concern was with plan versus strategy. Is that, are there more things you feel that would be needed uh, to make this help address some of the concerns you've raised in terms of our recommendations? No, I think all of the recommendations that are in the EDR are, are, are good. We endorse those and, and we tried to supplement those yep. and just wanted to, to perhaps modify the one that would suggest that there be a joint uh, transportation management plan between St. Elizabeth's and the joint base. To a plan and slash strategy, in other words. Well, we don't want a joint plan. We're happy to implement strategies jointly. Okay, so strategy. Okay, thank yes. you. That one right there. Further discussion? Mr. Chairman, I, uh, ooh, this is some history. First of all, uh, Bolden Air Force Base has been a very good neighbor to us in Anacostia for years, uh, and the Navy's been a part of that. Uh, this whole movement of Homeland Security and, 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 and the, is very important to our community, and we will hope it will work for us, even though we know there are many, many concerns and questions now. Uh, about a year ago, this issue was brought before us, at least a year ago, this new presence on Bolden Air Force Base and the Navy's takeover. Uh, at that time, I requested uh, in informally that they be, come to uh, our little community meeting, Anacostia Coordinating Council, which is involved in a lot of stuff in Anacostia. We have some roles, and they were not willing to show uh, now, I'm, 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 not, I'm not mad about that. You know, some people don't want to come to the dance. Okay, it's okay. 
But now I'm beginning to hear more <laughs> about things that just make me say, what is going on here? Uh, we have a good neighbor. Uh, we have good neighbors. Uh, Homeland Security has done so many things to try to accommodate them, even with the complexity of what they're doing. And now we got a federal player coming in from a neighborhood that they've been good citizens in, and we don't, we can't talk. We don't seem to be talking, you know, even at their level. Uh, the Lieutenant Colonel is present. Is, is he? Is can we? Is it time to bring him forward and have him, uh, you know, sure, Lieutenant. share with us? <laughs> is Lieutenant Colonel McClure. Yes. Yes. Chairman, Welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for the opportunity to come and, and Absolutely. address your questions and clarify what I believe are some misconceptions about our plan and what it intends to do. Be happy to hear from you. Yes. You're Air Force, though, aren't you? Yes. Okay. Yes. Just look like I'm a former Academy class of '67. Excellent. I did some time there, so I know about blue. Although I don't look like it, I'm also the Navy Public Works well, Officer for Joint Base Anacostia. So you're a purple suit for the moment. <laughs> Looks kind of purple. My vision is kind of <laughs> it's purple. Okay, I'm gonna yield on that, but let me please. I want to, Do, I'm curious. We'd be happy to hear any general comments you may have in response to what you've heard thus far, and then we can get into specific questions. But Thank you. Yes. One of our goals of the plan was to get some help from our planning firm to identify what portions of the base should be developed if there is new mission assignments or, or additional growth. And that's really where that 5,000-person growth came from. It's sort of to box, box in and define the framework of where we would place new missions should those arise. Uh, oftentimes, world events create changes quickly, and we have to react very fast to bring on new missions. There's often not time to do that planning. So we wanted the framework to show uh, general heights of buildings, where they would go, what types of facilities. So, so it's, it's important for me to note for the group that there is not planned growth of 5,000 people. That's, that's purely hypothetical, and, and the plan was intended to, f to determine where best to put future growth if it should occur. So, so the joint base master plan, like many you've seen, is not a developmental plan to increase or grow the size of the base. Uh, the base has been there since 1917. We're now in an in a equal or kind of a dynamic equilibrium with, without real growth or real, real shrinkage, although we do like to think it forward and, 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 and um, create plans in, in a contingency that we do have additional, um, additional folks coming on base. So I think that created a lot of concern with the readers of the plan, and many people have seemed to interpret that as, as joint base is growing by 5,000 people. That's not the case. But, but what about the discussion about talking and collaborating, meeting with community groups? And well, I'm surprised by that because we've had a series of meetings with a lot of community groups, inclu including the DHS staff, and, and um, held public comment meetings, uh, which were the middle of September this past year. Yeah, well, home, I mean, what Homeland Security said to share with us that there may be more cooperation discussion might be needed, and is that? I certainly agree that cooperation is in order because we have to cooperate to uh, mitigate the, the impact of all the new traffic coming to our area. But a lot of coordination is taking place, and we're very open to continued or increased co uh, coordination. That's only positive. Um, I'd also like to point out that a lot of the concern uh, with our north gate is probably moot at this point. When this uh, plan was complete, the recommendation from our firm was that it's a good idea for base traffic to move the uh, truck traffic to the north. We're trying to improve two conditions. One condition is, is that currently truck traffic is mix, mixed with uh, people commuting to work, and in times of heightened security, uh, traffic tends to back up on a 295, which is quite dangerous, and that's not going to improve any when we have the additional traffic coming to our area. The other concern we wanted to solve was that most of our destinations for our truck traffic are in the north part of the base, the industrial, light industrial portions of the base, and our re retail outlets. Now when traffic comes on the south gate, they transit through our residential neighborhoods through a large portion of the base to get to their destinations. Um, ent entry point on the north part of the base um, avoids that altogether. And um, I'm, I'm glad to hear DHS likes the plan of the north gate. Uh, we, we followed the recommendations in the joint plan, created that plan cooperatively with DDOT, and, and that's now our course of action. Um, our planning firm collected data from DHS and the GSA uh, EIS study for St. Elizabeth's. Our planning firm agrees that with that increased traffic, intersections outside First Sterling will in fact fail. And our strategy is to avoid that with our truck traffic. Um, I should also point out the truck traffic is fairly minor in comparison with the other traffic uh, coming to the base. Throughout the rush hour period, it's only about 70 vehicles and 13% of those are true trucks, <coughs> tractor trailers. So it's pretty, pretty minimal impact. And the design and conjunction meshed with the, uh, the new bridge 
would have a road come off the proposed traffic circle sufficient for any queuing space. Okay. I know many years ago there was an entrance to the Navy uh, part of the base, at, which is at that end, uh, where, where you could enter from the, right by the river, there was an entrance there. Uh, and it wasn't connected to First Sterling. Is that is that a poss has that been looked at as a possible? That's the North Gate we're talking about. Well, no, the gate I, still exists. Yeah, I know the North. Yeah, well, uh, okay. I think I know that North Gate at First Sterling, right? No, no, sir. This um, the North first Sterling is a gate on the North part of the base that we're all familiar with because it comes off of First yeah. Sterling Bay. There's, there's another uh, North Gate that lines up with the Park Service Road, essentially that goes into Anacostia okay. Park. Very good. And that's that's the road that we're talking about, the entrance that we're we're talking about that Miss Mitten alluded to. But that design would be uh, meshed with the bridge so that as traffic approached, there would be an inspection station um, on land, hopefully, that comes, comes to us in some sort of a land swap. Oh. Trucks would be inspected before passing under the bridge and then uh, go through a visitor center sort of process once, once onto the base. Now, Mr. Chairman, I'm going to yield, but I'm, I'm just sensing there's a, a, both miscommunication and maybe so. a lack of communication. And I don't understand why neighbors, you guys, are, you know, can talk to each other and make sure we get together and have a strategy that works for for everybody, and uh, the community will benefit from it totally. But I yield, Mr. Chair, at this time. Let me just clarify: you are planning for the possibility of 5,000 additional employees, but you're really not planning on having 5,000 additional employees. It's a contingency plan, a what-if scenario, but there is no basing decision, no mission decision, that brings 5,000 people to us. So I think one course of action to eliminate the confusion might be to keep our plan limited to the known growth, which is taking place now. Actually, that's finishing, and that's a result of the BRAC 2005 law. We have no intention of growing the base. We do want to improve commuter traffic. So the base itself is in dynamic equilibrium. We're replacing buildings at their end of the useful life. We're, we're uh, more efficiently using space for, for demolishing some facilities. And then we'd like to pursue strategies uh, in conjunction with Homeland Security, with DDOT and other agencies to improve commuter options and to reduce the uh, single occupancy vehicles on base. So you have no intention of growing the base, but you're planning for it in case it happens? Yes. And by submitting that in a master plan, then we therefore must do certain things and include certain calculations. I mean, that's part of the master planning process, irregardless of you're not intending it, but you're planning for it in case it does happen. I think there's probably two courses of action. It's One would be to take that hypothetical 5,000 people, spend tax dollars, do a detailed analysis on the traffic for what that would uh, impact. Maybe another course of action is to reduce the scope of our plan to only encompass the planned growth and, and um, not undergo the analysis for something until it actually happens. Mr. May? Yeah, I mean, your, your comments raise a whole bunch of uh, questions. Um, so, uh, first, uh, at one point you, you suggested that the plan could be modified to limit it to the known growth. Um, what is that, that growth level? If 5,000 is the max, what's the known growth? That known growth is listed in the plan as, as about 1,500 folks. 1,500? Yes. Um, and most of those and, efforts have... And it, oh, sorry, and do you, so do you have like kind of two phases of the plan? One is for the known growth and then there's the you know, the, the what-if scenario that brings it all the way up to 5,000? Is it, I mean, is there something that we should be focusing on? Because even at 1,500, we need to understand what the impacts are of that number of people and that number of uh, cars, if they're driving, um, whatever. Yes, and um, one, one of the, I guess, the most significant aspect or, or driver for the growth is the NISMA facility construction. It has already uh, gone through the approval process, uh, EA process through NEPA, and, and also approval through the NCPC. Right, I recall. So there's no the additional building. expansion beyond the projects that have already been uh, approved and underway. Okay, so all that's already been covered. The people the have 1500 moved to the has already yet. been covered. Yes, the people have not okay. moved to the base yet, but those projects have been addressed. Okay, and so now let's talk about the the, the gate, the the North Gate versus the First Sterling Gate. Um, I think the Park Service in the past has had some concerns about the North Gate, so if it's going to be phased in at some point, um, the the trigger for that is the reconstruction of the bridge or the transfer of Poplar Point to the district? I mean, what, what would trigger that, the creation of of that new gate and processing facility? It could only happen after the bridge is constructed 
and after we seek and gain funding for the development to, uh, to create the inspection stations and all the facilities that support it. And in our meetings to develop this concept, we've, we've been participating with DDOT as well as the DC Office of Planning. And, and that is tied in with the, the development at Poplar Point and the plans for that space. Right. Okay. So the, that if it were at the time when it's implemented, it would not um, trigger uh, the, the flow of your traffic th along Anacostia Drive through the park. No, sir. It would come off of the new traffic circle proposed as a part of the bridge if that option is selected. And um, I, I, I would not anticipate that sort of a change until after 2014. So we're talking about a change somewhat down the future. You wouldn't anticipate that change, in other words, the, that, that, that work actually happening as opposed to that? Correct. Okay. Correct. In terms of the plan, is that the, what you're describing here with the, the, the North Gate, is that what was submitted to NCPC for their review, for the staff review? It, it, this plan has an assessment of using First Sterling Gate. Right. The plan uh, supports or, or confirms the analysis from DHS that those intersections right off First Sterling Gate will fail once the new traffic comes. So, and it recommends that we find a solution in, while partnering with DDOT to mitigate that concern. And that's exactly what we've done. Okay, so and is that what you evaluated? Was the North Gate or was it the First Sterling Gate? The First Sterling Gate. The First Sterling. Okay, so it's changed subsequent to the submission. It has. Okay. You know, the drawings on the plan show First Sterling Gate, but the recommendation on the plan indicates that, that choosing First Sterling Gate without some other solution uh, is not recommended. So we've, we followed the recommendations of the plan and created a new solution to use okay. the North Gate. All right. Where's the North Gate on this map, please? It's right there, right? This shows a potential future location, but the North Gate is at the bottom, bottom right-hand tip, but yeah. slightly in the property it. line. The fence line is somewhat in the okay. property line, a couple hundred feet. Right. That's the first. Well, that's the first stone. I understand. I, I, I you're, you're not on a microphone. I think you need to be on a microphone when you're speaking. Yeah. So. Yeah, I um, have. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. I, I, I don't have any further questions, but it's interesting yeah. seeing this presentation after the last one because this one seems a little bit more incomplete than the last one. If well, the, this is not intended to address was. growth, so that, that's hmm. a big a big difference in the of the purpose of the plans. Uh, yeah, I understand that, that, and that wasn't not growth, uh, not clear to me. I'm not sure, you know, until you said that. But I don't. That's not the the, the biggest issue because even if it is a, an ant anticipated sort of maximum growth you're essentially asking for a blessing on that anticipated maximum growth and that's not something you can do without understanding what the full impacts are and I think that um, you know it's clear from the staff report that that what what has been evaluated is not really adic adequate to make um, a, a, a good judgment on that at this point so I would not ask for or seek uh, permission for un unconstrained growth or, or growth of some arbitrary number but if, if there's a new future uh, basing decision, following that would be a, a proposed uh, NEPA process with an EIS and approaching this, this panel again with the construction uh, so, so, drawing. So, you're, so you're, there's you're, other, it would be other steps before we build, for sure. Okay, so you're pr proposing essentially retracting this as a, a, a master plan, uh, redefining it to describe essentially what's already been approved, and then putting off a future master plan anticipating this growth uh, due no. to other missions at some point in the future? Not at all. Not at all. Okay. Then, uh, then explain to me. The staff panel has proposed changes to the plan that I think are constructive, so I anticipate a, a revision cycle. And we would use this plan or, or alter this plan to reflect the changes that have taken place with our, with our thought process with the North Gate. And we would also use, would limit the scope to reflect um, plan development, not hypothetical or p potential development, which would simplify it, I think, for, for all. Okay. So At such time, if, if there is a new mission or a new basing decision, we'll address that growth with a plan at the time that it occurs, if it ever does occur. Well, I, 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 I don't want to suggest that, that, you're, um, that the idea of planning for this potential future growth um, is not a smart thing to be doing because we've, we've experienced other circumstances and other basis frankly where the um, where the their you know the mission gets assigned and there isn't enough time to do the planning mm -hmm. and so the plan 
excuse me, follows the uh, the decisions that have been made and, and um, doesn't work out very well. So, um, I, I mean, I think you're wise to plan into the future, whether it's 5,000 additional personnel or something less, but it, I wouldn't necessarily say that you need to retract it all the way back to what you already have in the pipeline. That's that's sort of a master plan as an as-built document. It's not the right way to plan. So. And Mr. Hart. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, my firm, the Onyx Group, is currently working on a task order at uh, JBAB, not with a master plan, but to avoid any appearance of you know, conflict of interest, I will recuse myself from this item. Yes, sir. Further discussion? Mr. Chair, I just want to be sure that we're going to have a conversation between you and Homeland Security that's going to be meaningful. Absolutely. In fact, we've, we've had many, and we have frequent periodic meetings with Homeland Security's uh, transportation coordinator, and we'd like to continue those. In fact, we're inviting them over now for weekly discussions because we think that increased communication is in order. Could I just, could I just ask Homeland Security if they would mind is that happening? No, I'm not trying to doubt the, the colonel. I believe him, but is that is that progress? Is that making? Just want to be sure. The community is in the middle. It's like you know, you two elephants fight. Only the grass dies, right? Uh, we the community. We the grass. Good afternoon. I'm Christopher Mills. I'm the assistant director for headquarters consolidation. I'm also the St. Elizabeth's program manager. Um, just to clarify, the first we found out about the uh, uh, JBAB master plan was from NCPC staff, February of 2010 when the Navy uh, facility was coming before the Commission for Action. There was, there was no interaction uh, between uh, Bowling uh, Navy and us prior to that. Uh, once we found out about it, we asked for a meeting to, to, to understand what was going on. From that meeting, we, we um, expressed some concerns with the traffic and the coordination. Um, the following that meeting, we ex they said they would go back and look at it, we'd get back with, with us. We didn't hear anything for the next several months. So I followed up in April of 2010, and then we met in July of 2010. Again, just to express, what are you doing, and how is that, how is that uh, um, first sterling uh, transportation issue coming along? There were no changes, so GSA agreed to share our transportation analysis to further you know, underscore our concerns. And that's really the last we heard from them until this last week, I think. Yeah. So there's, there's been no official, I mean, there's been no consultation. Uh, we, didn't, we never received a copy of the master plan. We, we were never invited to any public meetings on the master plan. Uh, we want to, and it gives me no great pleasure to say this before the, this committee, because we want to cooperate with uh, our federal neighbors and we need to cooperate. And for us to be successful, it's only gonna happen if we're, if we're consistent <coughs> in our approaches. So we can't be doing one thing on one side of, the, of 295 and having uh, JBAB do something else on the other side of 295. We're all federal employees. We need to have consistent policies and coordinated efforts. So we welcome that they're willing to talk. We need to have a, a coordinated planning effort. Um, that needs to be meaningful for us, for both, for, for both Boeing's interests and for our interests. Mr. Chairman, I'm satisfied. I just want to be sure that they do it. Yes, yeah. sir. Thank you. Uh, I remind the commission, and this is a preface to a question, uh, Colonel. Uh, unusually, despite the geography of uh, JBAB, uh, this commission is advisory. Um, that being the case, uh, uh, Colonel, can you comment specifically on your intentions regarding uh, the commission's uh, recommendations in the EDR, the items in the EDR? Yes, I'm, I'm familiar with that um, designation as advisory, but nonetheless, it's ever, in everyone's best interest for us to incorporate comments and constructive changes, and there's many of those in the comments. So I would very much like to meet uh, with, with the uh, Commission staff to fully understand the comments and discuss about how we're going to implement those in the next iteration of the plan. We welcome that. Thank you very much. And. Um, we, we've had, we have had extensive meetings. Uh, I, I think the characterization is just not correct um, of, of the meetings and, and uh, the offers to share the plan. In fact, we've, we had a public uh, comment uh, session as a part of the EA on the 15th of September, invited DHS and others. They did not uh, participate. So there, there is a communication breakdown. I don't know if it's between us and DHS or internal, but I think we can all agree to uh, 
rectify that and, and do better in the future. Good. I'll speak for everyone and say yes, we all agree that <laughs> there shall be much better communication. <laughs> so, yes, sir. Okay. Um, other questions or comments from commission members? Mr. Provincia. Um, I think the, the precedent of one agency coming in and, uh, and asking the NCPC to require another agency to withdraw their master plan, I think, is unprecedented, and uh, some might even characterize that as uh, extreme. I would characterize it as extreme, since I carefully chose that word. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to, to figure out uh, what kind of a clear signal, and what I'm hearing is uh, mixed signals. Um, the chairman commented earlier about uh, being appreciative on the NAC project of seeing a master plan, a draft master plan submitted, and now somebody submits a master plan and we just beat the hell out of them for submitting a master plan. What were you thinking at the time you submitted a draft master plan is the message that, that, that I'm getting that's coming across loud and clear. Why are you not... Uh, planning for the potential future possibility of a perhaps a realignment of the Douglas Bridge, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, why are you doing something innovative that uh, pre uh, presents a, uh, a flexible master plan that uh, acknowledges known growth and then plans for future unknown con contingencies? What are you possibly thinking? Um, th this is a, I'm trying to paraphrase and to characterize some of the uh, instructions that I'm uh, seeing issued. I think there's many positive things uh, in the, the plans, I, uh, and uh, those were covered in the presentation by staff. The uh, sensitivity to the heights, to the uh, view sheds, the proposed heights of the buildings, these were all uh, emphasized. The uh, zoning, uh, the preservation of the historic elements, uh, the zones of, uh, of JBAB, the landscaping that will promote and sustain those uh, historical elements. Sustainability was uh, was highlighted, the waterfront uh, greenway, and on and on and on. There's so m many, many more positive things uh, that are elements of the plan. There's uh, some pretty strong language about uh, the parking ratios, how come the plan doesn't Im immediately take care of the parking ratios. I think that uh, is uh, probably an, an onerous uh, requirement. Um, clearly, I think there's an, a, a commitment on the behalf of the JBAB uh, leadership to, uh, in the future plans, the future iterations, achieve that parking ratio. The plan uh, improves the parking ratios almost 50%. Uh, I think we should uh, acknowledge and uh, be appreciative uh, of that. The um, requirement to uh, commun uh, cooperate and collaborate with the uh, neighbors, I think, is a, a reasonable one. It looks like uh, the JBAB staff has tried repeatedly to, to do that. When it didn't work in a public forum, they've been having offline uh, one-on-one -on -one meetings, which sometimes can be more productive than trying to have a discourse in a, in a public forum. So I applaud the, the JBAB leadership uh, for, uh, for those efforts. Um, I think we're uh, headed in the right direction. I think uh, uh, amongst all the comments, I think there all are some kernels of, uh, of good advice and would, uh, would hope and I'm confident that the JBAB uh, staff will take those on board. Uh, I think it should be clarified, too, that NAVFAC is the design, construction, and planning agent uh, and has a good uh, uh, reputation, uh, particularly in the last year or so, of working more closely with, uh, with DDOT and with the D.C. Office of uh, Planning. And I think the, there's a commitment to continue to Im, uh, improve those relationships in, the, in that collaboration. So, thank you, sir. Thank you. Questions or comments? Hearing none, is there a motion on the EDR? I, I'd make a motion that the commission provides the comments as listed in the EDR and as supplemented by Homeland Security. I second that. It's been moved and seconded that the EDR approved, uh, noting the other comments uh, submitted by DHS. Uh, further discussion? I just, uh, I, I just wanted to be able to support the Department of Homeland Security today. <laughs> publicly, <laughs> uh, loudly. And just... I know the irony, too, of wishing that some of the deficiencies pointed out in the TMP had just been pointed out in the previous one. That's all, that's all I really was trying to get at. Clarify what the amended motion is. Is this uh, specifically to uh, insert every uh, paragraph that's in italicized uh, font, 
requiring the uh, the Navy to do this and do that and analyze the impacts and, and so forth. Is that is that what the motion is? Ms. Yes, Stein, I, I, I believe there are three three requests made directly of the commission, and I, I propose to include them all, all three. Well, should we take uh, that as a separate amendment to the motion? No, my motion was both the condition, the comments of the EDR and the comments of the Homeland Security as one motion. I believe Colonel McClure, speaking on behalf of the GBAB leadership, uh, agreed to uh, all of these conditions. Okay, so you're, you're okay with that then, Mr. Provencio? No, sir, I'm not okay with amending the, uh, the uh, um, EDR to include these. I think that we've already gotten commitment that uh, the leadership is willing to do so without being formally instructed and required to, to do so. The chair would wonder if we should uh, take the second, uh, perhaps include your, uh, have yours as an amendment to the EDR. Uh, Ms. Steingasser? Is the commission limited to only moving the EDR or moving the EDR with amendments? I, mean, I, well, I would like it to be one one motion. I think it's, it's, well, it's more The language sufficient. in the letter says require also, and mm -hmm. we're, we, we, we can't require. It's advisory. Right. I would suggest on that okay. point um, that each of these, each of the italicized paragraphs could, you could take out that first part of at, we asked the commission to require the Navy. You, you, they could all be additional information that is being uh, requested in the TMP uh, on page two. The additional things that we would be requested at the top of uh, that should be part of a TM. On page two, it says request the, of the EDR, it says request the following additional information, and it says a transportation management program with the following additional information. That into each of these, each of these italicized paragraphs asks for additional information. The first one says, if you go with an, an analysis of the specific impacts on the transportation network serving the joint base, uh, specific est estimates of the visitors' trips that will be redirected and their impact on the levels of service of intersections along Firth Sterling, an analysis of the impacts. So if you just take out the, uh, we ask the commission to require mm -hmm. the Navy to language and change mm -hmm. analyze to an analysis in each of these paragraphs, paragraphs, I think they will all fit into the types of additional information that uh, would fit into that uh, paragraph of the EDR that, uh, for the D TMP. I would accept that as a friendly suggestion. Friendly okay. suggestion to <laughs> okay. let Deborah try to slip down. <laughs> so just to be Maybe sure. What's being referenced is in Ms. Steingasser's uh, comments that she passed out, not the previous letter. That Ms. We Mitten's got. comments. Oh, Ms. Mitten, excuse me, Ms. Mitten's comments. So the motion, Ms. Young, is to pass, uh, to approve the EDR uh, and also include the items in italicized language, but striking from each one the part about we the commission require and just picking up the, the action. That's the motion. Is there a second? second? It's been moved and seconded. Is there any brief further discussion? <laughs> Hearing none, all in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. Opposed no. no. One no. Uh, one no and one abstention. Mr. Hart abstains. Thank you very much, and we do appreciate you yep. submitting a master plan. Uh, we look forward to working with you. Thank you very much, truly. <laughs> the commission will continue on. Uh, item, agenda item 5C is the Post Exchange Shopping Center at Fort Belvoir, North Post, and we have still with us Mr. Weil. Mr. Weil? Good afternoon again. Uh, this is a project resubmission for a project uh, the Commission reviewed uh, last month's meeting uh, for the Post Exchange Shopping Center located at uh, Fort Belvoir, Virginia. Uh, it's being resubmitted by the United States Department of the Army uh, for final site and building plan review. Uh, and again, this is in follow-up to the Commission's uh, review of the preliminary design at the April uh, Commission meeting. So again, the project site is located on the north uh, post portion of Fort Belvoir. 
uh, located uh, just to the north uh, west of the existing PX and commissary buildings. And um, the, the proposed design has not uh, changed at all. Uh, it's still a 263,000 square foot shopping center. Uh, staff notes that a majority of the interior space will be utilized by the uh, AFES post exchange. And just to recap uh, the commission action from last month's meeting, uh, the commission disagreed with staff's recommendation for approval of the project, uh, disapproved the preliminary site and building plans for the new post uh, exchange shopping center due to concerns with uh, its site plan and removal of uh, 4,700 trees. Uh, and the commission required the Army to, to sum submit an updated master plan that includes a reforestation plan and noted that the Fort Belvoir master plan was last approved in 1993 and that the commission may find it difficult to approve any future uh, proposals until the submission of an updated master plan. So pursuant to last month's commission action, uh, the Army reviewed the action and reached a determination that it disagreed with the commission action. Uh, so therefore, that's why uh, this project is being resubmitted uh, for final design uh, review pursuant to Section 5 of the National Capital Planning Act. Um, once the Army uh, uh, staff, uh, uh, the Army communicated that it disagreed with the commission action, uh, staff crafted several guidance questions uh, based on review of the commission transcripts from last month's meeting. Um, staff made it clear to the Army that Responding to uh, staff's questions was optional. At the end of the day, the Army could, could craft any sort of uh, response that it deemed appropriate uh, to try to justify the, the, the final design. Uh, and these three questions really <coughs> sum up the, the, the staff uh, guidance questions. Number one, could the PX shopping center and North Post Town <laughs> Center designs uh, change at all? I, is there any opportunity at this point to change those? Uh, how is the project's tree replacement mitigation determined? And will the master plan update uh, include a reforestation plan component? In general, uh, the Army's response uh, express, expressed disappointment uh, at the, at the uh, uh, Commission's disapproval of its preliminary design uh, and also reiterated that uh, uh, from the Army's perspective, it, it felt that uh, it did adequately respond to NCPC and Fairfax County's comments uh, uh, to the concept submission that was reviewed at last summer. Um, and basically, I'll go through the, the kind of summarize the, the, the new responses, the new information um, in response to the staff questions. Uh, regarding the North Post Town Center, uh, the applicant said that although there, there is no opportunity to reshape the post exchange shopping center and commissary at this point, uh, there is opportunity to reshape the remainder of the town center. Uh, which is seen here in, in this red dotted area. And here's the, the shopping center and the, the future commissary. I'm sorry, can you go back to that again? Sure, absolutely. So we have the proposed shopping center site, uh, the future commissary site, and then this is, this is a historic uh, cemetery. Oh. And, and basically this whole area within this red dotted line <coughs> is open for shaping. Uh, right now, this is uh, show, uh, shown, I, I believe, with, with housing. Uh, however, the applicant indicated that uh, anything really can, is in play at this point, the roadway network, the uses. Um, so this is really the remainder of what would be the, the future plan North Post Town Center. Okay. Uh, the applicant indicated that uh, in response to uh, the, the current customer base for the, the current PX uh, use, 96% uh, of the customers travel from off post uh, to, to uh, patronize that use. And so as a result, the future uh, PX shopping center uh, is oriented to allow driving, uh, easy driving access to the site uh, to uh, accommodate this uh, anticipated large off-post population that would be served by the shopping center. Uh, regarding the proposed trees, tree replacement, uh, the applicant indicated that the reason why two and a half inch caliper trees uh, were selected is, is they felt that in their past experience uh, that size tree afforded the best combination of uh, making a positive in impact on, on the landscape uh, and it also had a relatively high uh, survival rate. 
uh, compared to other sized trees, uh, both larger and, and smaller. Uh, and that trees that do not survive will be replaced uh, in kind during the first year per a warranty. Uh, and lastly, the applicant indicated that a tree reforestation plan will be addressed in the, in the master plan update as requested by the commission. Um, in conclusion, uh, the, the, the staff felt after reviewing the, the, the transcripts from last month's uh, commission meeting, um, staff made the determination that uh, really the, the, the two key concerns expressed by the commission was uh, were the site plans for the town center uh, and the proposed shopping center design uh, and also the, the, the large proposed uh, extent of the tree removal uh, being 4,700 4, trees. So uh, as such, uh, it is the executive director's recommendation to the commission to acknowledge receipt of the Army's response to the commission preliminary action uh, as required by section five of the National Capital Planning Act uh, to disprove the final site and building plans for a new post exchange shopping center for Belvoir uh, since the proposal is not fully responsive to the commission's concerns expressed at the preliminary review stage regarding the substantial tree loss resulting from the project and the overall site planning of the post exchange in North Post Town Center and to note that the lack of approved master plans impairs the commission's ability to ensure the comprehensive planning and orderly development of the national capital and therefore requires the applicant to submit an updated master plan that includes a reforestation plan addressing replacement of trees lost due to construction projects on the post and noting that the commission may find it difficult to approve any future proposals until such time as an updated master plan is submitted. And that concludes my presentation. I'm available to answer any questions uh, and the Army also has representation as well. Thank you, Mr. Weil. This is not a new project. Um, we're very familiar with the issues. Is there um, discussion, Mr. Mr. Hart? In this recommendation, um, I'm reading it that the approved master plan that's required here is an installation master plan, not a site uh, development master plan. That, that is correct. Very good. For the questions or comments, then I would invite uh, a representative from the Army to come and make any comments that uh, they may wish, if at all. Chris Langraff, I'm the Acting Chief of Facility Planning and the Master Planner at Fort Belvoir, Acting Master Planner. Uh, we just like to regret or say that we regret your decision, the executive director's recommendation to disapprove. Uh, we feel that we have worked with the staff, uh, previous recommendations for pervious pavement versus structured parking. We did adopt pervious pavement. Um, you know, we have reduced the site footprint as, as much as practical to deal with the off post, uh, the number of off post personnel that come to utilize this facility within the national capital region. Uh, we have expressed to the, the NCPC staff that we are willing to work with the additional parts of our town center that are not currently developed, but due to grading plans associated with the PX and the, therefore the commissary and their proximity, there's not a lot of uh, possibility for us to change those two four, four put, or footprints right now. Um, but the Fort Belvoir, as stated previously, will continue to work with this commission on all future projects. So thank, thank you, you. Mr. Langraff, very much. A further discussion? Hearing none, is there a couple of quick questions about the, uh, it looks like the two, e two key issues are, as uh, stated, the, uh, the, the tree loss and the, uh, the site planning. On the issue of the tree loss, uh, can we explore that just a minute? Is it numbers of trees? Is it caliper? Is it uh, the inability of uh, the Belvoir folks to guarantee the survivability of 100% of the trees? It looks like those types of issues are covered uh, by the, the larger uh, caliper trees that are provided as well as uh, taking out uh, life insurance on the, on, on the trees during the warranty period so that they could be replaced. Is it still not adequate as far as either numbers or caliper? Is that, uh, is, what's the, the crux of the, the reservations from staff about uh, the tree? Well, uh, you know, state? staff, uh, re regarding the, 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 the tree issue, um, you know, in response to the large number of trees that the mm -hmm. project were, would remove, uh, staff at last month's meeting proposed 
uh, the incorporation of a tree reforestation plan right. to help mitigate some of that, that tree loss uh, and, in addition and, to that. And Elmore Elmore. is receptive to that, is my understanding. Uh, and, and, and they are. They are. Um, however, upon reviewing the, the transcript uh, from the last commission meeting, uh, staff interpreted the, the commission action to disprove uh, the entire preliminary design as requiring a significant change in, in, in the proposed design, mm -hmm. such as creating a, a multi structure use or, or structured parking or revisiting the entire. Uh, town center uh, plan mm -hmm. and um, at the end of the day when the staff reviewed uh, the, the the proposed design which had not changed uh, basically we we did not feel that that uh, anything significant uh, you know had been uh, brought to the commission and to the staff for for review so mm -hmm. that's why we we are recommending uh, disapproval of the project of the final mm -hmm. design on the uh, issue of the uh, future, try, trying to uh, correct the uh, the site planning issues with the uh, future town center, is staff not receptive to uh, to Belvoir proposals? Uh, with to, to, uh, with helping to form the the remainder of the town center? Yes. Yes. Uh, yes, absolutely. We we've, we've spoken to the applicant and we've expressed an interest to to really uh, work with them to collaborate to uh, help form the remainder of the town center. Mm -hmm. What I'm, I'm just trying to clarify whether what I'm, the message from staff to Belvoir is we want it to be fixed and we want it to be fixed now and we want it to be fixed in this phase and we're not really receptive to it, these uh, issues being addressed and complied with and, and uh, repaired in, the, in future phases. Yeah, I mean, that, uh, uh, you know, at, 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 I guess at the end of the day, um, you know, we, we were left to interpret based on review of the transcripts and, and the commission action uh, that the commission sought something dramatic, such as mm -hmm. revisiting again the entire town center, or or dramatically improving the the the, the d modifying the the design of the the shopping center. And you know, it was staff judgment uh, that what was proposed and the fact that the design did not change mm -hmm. did not significantly right. do that. All right, so. I understand. Thank you for that uh, clarification. Thank you, Mr. Hart. I was not here for the last meeting, so I wasn't party to a lot of the discussion. It looks to me like this plan was submitted, and it's it's a satellite out there someplace. Doesn't really have much relationship to any context. Therefore, uh, the recommendation that this really should flow out of a an installation master plan, I think, is well founded. Um, I mean, while I wasn't able to say anything about JBAB, we flogged those guys. For looking farther ahead than their immediate needs and I, I think that in this case uh, with BRAC here's a base that, that saw an enormous amount of growth acknowledged that there's no master plan for it so um, really uh, our role as the National Planning Commission really should be what we're doing here pushing for a master plan that accommodates known and, and even unknown potential growth in a way that makes the most sense. Uh, the little plan that I saw that called this a town center, I think uh, is not, it's not a town center. Town center implies a certain amount of density and proximity and pedestrian accommodation. So um, I think as the Army goes forward uh, with a master plan, it really needs to look at integrating uh, known as well as potential future uh, growth requirements uh, in that that plan in order to, to put the pieces together in a logical way. Uh, enough said. Was there a motion? Is there a motion on the EDR as written? I'll move the EDR. It's been moved and seconded. Uh, sensing no further discussion, all in favor of the EDR say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Two no's, Mr. Provencia and Mr. Dennis. And with that, uh, that's the last item on our agenda. Is there anything else uh, for the good of the whole? Hearing none, thank you for your uh, work today. Uh, we are adjourned.